Show, sure, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How are you guys doing out there? What's Ooh. up? Hey, um, today, you know what today is? Today is June 30th. June 30th. It's a day before my birthday. What? <laughs> Dang, Abel. How old are you going to be, Abel? I'm old, man. 38. 39? No, wait. I was born in 1981. July 1st, 1981. Uh, oh, my God. 39. Yeah. Damn, dude. Time You're getting up there, man. Fast, man. You're getting up there. That's fucking nothing. What's up, man? You haven't even doing? hit 4-0, dude. Talk to me another year. Hey, man. I feel like, I, I feel like I'm 4-0. No, what do you hit 4-0? I hit 40, and my body just went... <laughs> That happened to me at 30. <laughs> <laughs> I fell apart, dude. Yeah? What's new? Uh, Man, just working, man. Working hard. You know, this whole... Uh, I feel like this whole COVID thing, the regulation... It's like it has everybody hostage, man. Well... Like, I'm, I'm like right here in Orange County, it's still good. Right? But we're hearing reports out of, like, Arizona, like, having, like, just major spikes. Yeah. And uh, they actually went from phase four... They went back. They went backwards. So yeah. they went from they closed down phase four, and they closed down phase three, I believe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that's not good, dude. That's not good at all. That's uh, Arizona, Texas, and Florida. Oh, really? I yeah. just I just heard of Arizona. No, Arizona, Texas, and Florida. Ooh. Florida was stepping way up. Remember, they were like, but it's Florida. It it's is Florida. Like, it seems like Florida don't care, man. Florida don't give a crap, dude. <laughs> Florida, <laughs> Florida just they do whatever they want, man. Florida seems like a fun place to go, man. Florida seems wild, man. It does seem wild. Really wild. Yeah, you're right, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I thought about you when I heard the numbers and stuff like that. Uh, Orange County's growing, man. At my work, we've had a few cases in different departments. Yeah. And it's just been lucky that I haven't like, uh, hey, cr- so Okay, paths. so how much... Look, so I was speaking to some experts that are here with us. Uh, experts? Well, you know, they're front line. They, I mean, they, they get information that they, we they don't... They watch Joe Rogan and uh, whatever else. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm not even going to say the names because then they're going to come after you. <laughs> um, but it, the consensus is the same. Like with people that are on the front line that actually have a uh, uh, say on a day-to-day about how this stuff gets handled, um, they're like, you know, like Orange County is still good, but for sure there's been an uptick and for sure we're all concerned. Hey man, I just wear it if you have to, man. Just you know, it's that simple. It's I crack up. Hey guys, when, come on, man, wear your mask. I, I, I crack up watching all these videos on Instagram, and seeing people that are so suppressed because they got to wear a mask. And, you know, my my daughter just went back to school. This is her second day at school. And why wouldn't the teacher wear a mask with all these little kids? Second, right? second day. Does se- she? Does her teacher wear a mask? They all do. It's just uh, there's a whole process to even yeah, like check yeah. her in. Yeah. Well, good for her. She probably needed to go back to school. Oh, she needs to go back, dude. I think you know? everybody needs to go back to school. Like, I, got... I mean, there's going to be people out there like, there's going to be people like, yeah, that's great. You, you, she's living. She's going back to school. And there's going to be other people that are watching this that are like, oh, no, that's totally wrong. And you know what, dude? Well, you you got to live, man. You, you got to be smart about what you do. You just got to live. You, you know, we you send know, her with um, the proper protection and all that. And and the procedures are taking at school are like, I mean, it's legit. They're, they're, they are not messing around. I mean, I mean, if something happens, you know. I, I keep hearing, like, I've heard different sides to everything on this thing. And, uh, you know, the, you can't live in a bubble, but you can protect yourself. And it's not even about protecting yourself. It's more about protecting the people around you, you know. But people don't seem to get that, you know. Mm. If you're not feeling well, just put it on. Yep. It's really that easy. Stay home. Stay home. Yeah. Stop complaining that the bars are closed, dude. Yeah. Go buy some beer and sit at home and get, you know. Or better yet, get yourself a nice bottle of something. Yeah. Because you're going to save a lot of money not being at the bar. And make yourself a nice stiff drink. And, and everybody's like. <laughs> make yourself a stiff drink at like, home. Everybody's like, well, it's a social. You so- don't have to drive. Yeah, it's a social thing. Well, dude, tell a couple of your buddies, come over and chill out at your house. and let. Hey, them- listen, we, we felt like we were being enclosed, right? What did we do? Well, well, we started yeah. a podcast. We want to be social. <laughs> I know, right? We are a little crazy, though. Hey, I am crazy. And I do believe in social. I, I need it. I'm, we both are. I'm one what of do those, you think we're doing this? I I'm mean, one of those people that, you know, Devin needs to talk to people. I need to be, like, interacting. Yeah. I get depressed if uh, I don't. No, yeah, me too. This last week, I was pretty, like, yeah. I kind of, like, fell into, like, 
I don't know what it is. Sometimes I just do, and yeah. it just all of a sudden I get like real quiet, and you won't hear from hey, me. Hey, I wonder if the people at home know that we gave your mic a little bit of pep. I can tell. Hopefully it, hopefully it shows up. I can up. tell. Because there's sometimes that you say some funny stuff underneath your breath, and I get to hear it, but they don't. Uh, and so it's like, I wanted to capture that. I so I, I kind of I kinda did a little. So you, good news. Uh, so, so we started from scratch with this thing. We got friends and family watching all our, uh, you know, um, social media and really helping us out, pumping us up, you know. Now we just need you to go watch it on YouTube. I get it's a little long, but yeah, watch a little bit. A little bit of time. Chip away at it. A little bit of time. Speed it up. Try to see or hear what's Rewind, going on. Rewind, forward, yeah. skip around. Yeah. Um, That's what podcasting is. But we hit 100 likes on Facebook without even trying. <laughs> so I was cool. like, milest- I'm a big milestone yeah. guy, dude. That's a milestone. Come That's on. Cool. Some people are like, my son was like, it's just 100. You know, it's like, a, you gotta start somewhere. It's like, dude, no, you don't get it. You know, it's like, we're two guys. I, you mentioned on the last podcast, our generation just not doing this. You know, we're yeah, we're older for doing this. We you are, know? we are, we are and, on the older um, side for for doing something crazy like for this. For starting something. Yeah. Now there's older guys that Gary, that just do it because they have nothing else Gary, better to do. Not only starting something, we didn't even understand the first thing of this. Oh uh, yeah, seriously. And and, and look, uh, here we are. <laughs> but I'm getting all kinds of cool tips and stuff like that, and crazy things, and you know, yeah. um. Yeah, so check us out. Get a chance. Hit subscribe. It's hit important subscribe. that you guys hit subscribe, you know? Yeah, it's not going to hurt you. We're not going to send you, you know. What, like uh, like mailers and yeah, stuff? Yeah, we're not, we're not going to try to recruit you. you know? uh, it's not a cult, I promise. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, we're, you know, I'm not going to knock on your door, you know, or anything. <laughs> I send a, you wouldn't be able to knock on my door because I always keep my front gate locked send, send so Je- nobody can come. I'll send the Jehovah's Witnesses out to you. Hey, so what's up? What do we got today, man? Now that we can talk a little bit about uh, the 4th of July, you know, what are you doing on the 4th? 4th of July, man. This is kind of a weird year because, dude, hey, I, so, have, hey, I have serious traditions on the 4th of July. Yeah, you dude. do. I do. I, I actually I mean, joined you uh, last, last year. year. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. I have serious traditions, dude. I'm up. Crack of dawn, out with the crazies in HB, and uh, usually setting up my tent. And... But it's the good crazies. Like, that's fun. That's good stuff. It's oh, family. I have, a, I, like... I have a blast doing yeah. it, dude. I really do. It's really fun to people watch. Well, and... the truth is that what we had on the schedule was that we were going to, as as Black Belt Collective, we were going to join the parade, but then they, they did like a... Well, um... they're still having a parade, but it was it's very... But not for people. Yeah. It's just the, like the main people of the city. City. Yeah. And like the representatives and stuff like that, but um, next year, next yeah, year, for sure. Next year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, do. Same, same thing here, dude. Uh, all I'm gonna do on fourth is uh, hang out at home, probably get some spirits. Hey, are they? Uh, are they like are your neighbors? Or I shouldn't say neighbors, but are people around you in your area um, popping like the illegal fireworks and stuff? So you know what's crazy is uh, Fountain Valley is it's illegal. It's been illegal oh, like for they can like at all. twenty years. Got it's it. Illegal. So it's actually pretty mellow in Fountain Valley, but you go on the outskirts and you hit Westminster, Santa Ana, Huntington Beach, Garden Grove area, dude. It's like a war zone, <laughs> uh, man. I'm glad we. I'm glad because our dog's old, dude, and she uh, she hates that. You know, she's it deaf. messes with the dogs big time. Oh uh, yeah. I uh, use this little like droplet. Thing. You said like a CBD. Yeah, though, for right? the dogs, and um, I'm gonna buy some of that for her. No, it helps them because uh, like Rogue, I have I have for people out there that don't know. Um, I've always had boxers, and uh, I had three of them. Uh, Rampage, the dad, passed away not too long ago, uh, but uh, Ruby and Rogue are still around and they're healthy. But man, around this time they get just so nervous. They stop eating. They they're just pacing. Well, every night's probably like boom, 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 yeah. Ba-boom, ba-boom. And Rogue is just she gets like really panicky and she starts just like uh, hyperventilating, dude. Her yeah. ears go back. Yeah, and yeah. She just can't sleep. She can't eat. Start so, panting like crazy. Yep, yeah, exactly. And then uh, so you know, I give them some droplets and uh, she just knocks out. Yeah, that's what... Yeah, that's, it sucks. It's like torture, dude. That's a freaking plan this year. And then you think about it. So that's for the dogs. Imagine like veterans that like have PTSD and stuff. And then you get this dude down the street. It's not even 4th of July yet and just popping crap left and right. It sucks, dude. It yeah, sucks. I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know any... Well, I do know people with I P- do. PTSD. But, I do. But um, I don't know of anything that's ever happened like that. But 
I could only imagine that that would yeah, be Yeah, no, insane. it's my understanding that it, it, it triggers a lot of people's... Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I, I don't know. I, that's crazy, dude. Yeah. Um, I don't, do you barbecue? What do you eat during fourth? Yeah, man. Uh, well, you know, I mean, you know how we do. Yeah, we, like, yeah, we cook yeah. all the time. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, we cook all the time. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to be home, you know, and it's my birthday tomorrow. So, it, da, 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 so like, starting June. Today's the, your birthday. <laughs> start, da, 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 starting. Da, 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 uh, it's my birthday, too. <laughs> da, 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 da. So, look at, look at. You don't like that song? You don't like that song? How about this song? Hey, June. You don't know the movie, dude. You're showing, you're wow. showing how young you are. You're hey, picking a bunch of movies that are, are obscure. Candles, oh, I know dude. Sixteen Candles. Yeah, wow. Farmer Ted sings that to uh, Molly Ring. I haven't heard dude. that in a long time, though. Yeah, she goes. Everybody forgot my birthday. He goes, "It's your birthday. It's my birthday too." And then he's like, <laughs> da, 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 da. "Come on, man." So mid June through mid July, like between my wife and I and like the family, it's either somebody got married, somebody's birthday, somebody's anniversary, um, children are born. Like it's just literally like that. Those whole 15 days are just like that. And um, we're not going to be able to do much. Usually we go somewhere, we do stuff, and we're not gonna be, so we're just going to stay home, barbecue, eat, just barbecue a lot, eat yeah. a lot. As Make us. awesome food. At least you have a pool, dude. Have a pool, yeah. But At you're, you you're really close out. to the beach, though. Yeah, but <clears throat> I ain't you probably to the never beach. go to the beach, huh? I hardly ever go to the beach, yeah. and I love the beach. I I'll go any. What's well, funny when I lived in Huntington for all those years, I can't. Maybe I went to the beach like twice. Yeah, dude, I, I hardly ever. I would always stay away. What when, when I used to live a lot further? Yeah, I and I love it, and beach, I love yeah. it, but it's just. Dude, yeah. we're literally right around the corner for the beach yeah. right now, yeah, and. I haven't been down PCH in like a month. I actually go down PCH almost every night. Well, like when I leave here, I if go. If I had go. to go that direction, I probably would. But, it's a nice drive. But I don't just, you know. It's a nice drive and it's a nice way to decompress. Like uh, I get out of here and I just put I love the windows dri- down. I love driving down PCH too. And then you see the water and then you see like the lights like hitting the, the waves and stuff. It's cool. When I, when I used to do service for Pepsi and I would uh, start out at UCLA, I'd hang out up there. Do all my you know stuff, and then I'd hit Highway One, dude, <clears throat> all the way down. I hit, I mean, Highway One. So I went from like Santa Monica, all the way down uh, by past the airport, down Wilmington, yeah. all the way through LBC, dude, and then back right home, and I cruise right in. That was fun. That was good times. Well, that's good times. The thing is that, uh, like, if you, when you go down to Long Beach, like through Long Beach. Like you kind of it takes you like in inland a little bit, and like there's a lot of traffic and stuff right there, a lot of traffic and not a lot of views. Dude, uh, so what have you been missing in this quarantine? So that I and I was just looking at my notes because uh, I was at work and like I'm just dying. I haven't really had any pizza, dude. I've been really good with my diet, yeah. you know. And I haven't had even Chris noticed today. I was like, "Yeah, what's up, dog?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he say? He just said, "Man, you look slim. You look like you lost a little bit, a little bit of weight." And right. I was like, "Cool, man. I'm telling you, it's all. It's nothing but love in here. You walk in here, and everything's like, <laughs> yeah. You know? I don't know what he wanted from me, but <laughs> I, um, no. But I haven't really had like, like pizza, like good pizza, dude. So I'm dying for a pizza. I'm a pizza lover, dude." I'm a pizza lover. And you know, I tell you, like, Jimena has uh, Pizza Fridays. And we've, even though she wasn't going to school, like, we kept that up. Oh, really? Yeah. So whether it's from one place or another, or even like the Trader Joe's pizza, the organic, whatever yeah, pizzas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we've always tried to keep that don't, up. Don't, don't get me wrong. I've had pizza since, since I've been in a quarantine, but it's been Not like, it's been like cauliflower pizza. Oh, it's been look like, at you. Yeah, dude. I've been trying. I'm telling you, man. Have you tried making your own pizzas? Like, giving um, the stuff? And- yeah, but. Even then, dude, I, I want, like, just, uh, there's a place called Rance's here in Costa Mesa that's not far, and it takes them two hours. You have to get your phone what? call in. Oh, but it's like a deep dish or something? Deep dish, dude. Yeah, it'll it's take like a long, that pie. Straight from Chicago, dude, and, and uh, they built one here, and it's packed always. You got to wait for it to cook. So there's styles. They're like, right now, like, so there's styles, right? There's, like, the thin, and then there's, like, New York style, and then there's, like, the deep dish. Deep dish, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you prefer? Um, any? You know, it just depends on the mood, man. Right now, I'm craving that deep dish. Like, I can only have like one or two pieces, 
That's not like me. Usually, if I have any other pizza, I could probably eat the whole damn thing myself. <laughs> but those deep dish pizzas. Me too, are man. Like, I'm a diesel. Yeah, those I can deep eat pizza, are man. Like, oh man, those are know. so thick and. Deep dish doesn't mess around, man. No. He's like, oh, you think you're tough? Man. Have a slice of these. Uh, Put you down. Yeah, we take used a to... nap for a couple hours and then go have another slice. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. On deep heavy, dish. like heavy. real deep dish. Yeah. I, that was the first time I've ever had like a real deep dish, it's like pizza where it's layered and like. I was like. What have I been doing, man, that I haven't found this, you know, in so long? Yeah, yeah I used to, uh, like, the, what I prefer is, like, a New York style where you can fold it, you know, like, the big slice, you fold It's thin enough, but not too thin, where it's, like, a crisp, but, you know, thin. Dude. With some, oh, dude, just fold it. So, I got fat guy problems, I told you. Like, I'm dying, dying. This COVID-19 is cramping my style. I'm dying for Shakey's lunch a bunch, dude, bunch of lunch, dude. I, I've told you this before. Oh, man. man. I love Shakey's lunch, bunch of lunch, dude. <laughs> lunch of lunch. Man. Some Mojo's. Oh, dude, Mojo potatoes Mojo's. with the chicken. Mojo's. What do they put on that stuff, man? Crack. It is. They sprinkle it with crack. Dude, the one over off of Valley View. And Shakey's to sponsor us. Shakey's with some fried chicken and Mojo's. Dude, straight up. Could you imagine doing that? <laughs> <laughs> All the six, the six pounds it took me a month to get off of. That's the mojo. That's right, dude. We won't even be talking. It'd it just be, be, it'd be just mojos eating. and just fried chicken in my mouth. You guys would just listen to us eat. Um, dude. Yeah, Shakey's is the bomb. The and, pizza's good too, man. Oh, uh, everything's good yeah. at Shakey's. And it's dude. fresh too. When you do the bunch of lunch, yeah. like the pizzas keep on coming. Dude, so I shit you not, me and a buddy from work. Since it's in Garden Grove, it's easy to get to, you know? There's one in Garden Grove? Yeah, it's Valley View and Euclid or so. Or Valley View and Chapman. That's Shakey's. Come Shakey. on, man. Dude. Step up. So he goes, let's go. Let's go to a bunch of lunch, dude. My whole family loves a bunch of lunch. So I'm like, cool, let's go. Dude, I walk in. It's a good deal. Guy who sits right next to me. I look over, he looks at me, and we start busting up. He's my brother! My brother! He's like, dude, you're we're, kidding. We're here for some mojos, and we got down. Oh, yeah, dude. And the best thing to do is to do the bunch of lunch, because if you start doing the meals, like if you go like after that time, I think it's like from, I don't know, like 11 to 3 or something. If you miss the bunch of lunch and you start doing like the, it, it yeah. starts adding up pretty quick. Yeah, you get the family deal, you yeah. get all that, but it's not the same, dude. Hey, Shakey's. Come on, man. What love, love for you? It's not the same. Mojos. Pizza. Dude, and I can eat like. Oh, this one time. I've been to a lot of buffets, dude. Believe it or not. <laughs> I've been to a lot of buffets, dude. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm sorry, man. That was an easy one. Like, you literally, like. I but me and my on. coworker, dude. Uh -huh. it, there's not mud places to eat in Garden Grove. Is your coworker a diesel, too? Yeah, he's a heavy yeah? hitter, too, dude. All right, on. That's what we call at work when you're a little a garbo, heavy hitter. heavy hitter, dude. Um, so we're at work, and what's that place? Hometown Pu Buffet, right? Uh -huh. they still there's have one, those? Yeah, there's one in Garden Grove. Okay. Well, I don't know now. Now with COVID, uh, I have no clue. Probably not, right. you know. Uh, but we were in there one time, and uh, we're sitting down. We had a buffet, so we just start people watching, and we watch these two heavy hitters, these two girls come in, and... <laughs> They asked for a to-go box, dude. I don't think you could do that. Can no, you? they had a to-go box. Dang. And they, and they were like this, dude. How, how did they work the system? They worked the system. Yeah, I don't it, was, it was the most disgusting thing we ever did. We mean? watched them completely eat off the buffet, put it in, in the box, and then have some right there. While they were putting some in? Yeah. Damn. Dude, they literally had the box where it couldn't close. <laughs> I, 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 dude, I've seen some crazy hey, things maybe, at hey, buffets, listen, dude. Maybe they were hungry, okay? Maybe, man. Two heavy hitters, dude. They were, <laughs> they were big girls, dude. Three bills plus, easy, <laughs> easy. Oh man, that's a wide load, dude. And so there's that one. Then I was at a uh, bunch of lunch one time, and this dude, because the wings um, go really fast there, you know, and mm. or no, the chicken, just like the chicken, all the chicken goes really fast. Yeah, and they like literally put it out, out and everybody's, everybody's just waiting. Yeah, waiting for the yeah. breast, you yeah. know. And, and so we're sitting there waiting. All of a sudden, they, they stuck it out, right? The chicken. And this guy walks up to the, the chicken buffet and just literally takes the whole thing to his table. What? You could do that? 
I don't think you could do that, but he did, and he fed his family. Hey, some people live by different rules, huh? Like straight up. Like, I see some crazy stuff, dude. Like, I don't care about if anybody else wants some. I'm taking some. Yeah, for my family. Just took it all, dude. And, and then we were watching him too. Then we started watching. He him. was with the family though. He was with the family, uh-huh. and so then took the whole thing. Took the whole thing. Sweet. But then they had like grocery bags with him, and you see him like waiting for people to not look, and then he's like. Kitty. <laughs> That's a disorder. That's not. That's yeah, not. That's I not even know. rude. That's not even. Yeah. That's there, there's an issue there that he has to. Something. Talk Maybe to they're s- going hungry or something. I don't know, but it, it didn't look like they were going hungry. Again, another heavy hitter family. Uh, you know, sitting there. The kid, when the kids two bills and the mom and dad are easily three bills plus. Yeah. You know. oh, I'm telling you, fat people, we do some weird shit when it comes, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to food, dude. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Oh man, you know, so like you know how we cook a lot, and when we cook, um, it's usually not like small amounts. Like we'll cook a lot. Like we always, it's always we always have a, we have a saying that it's better to have more than uh, not have enough. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So especially when you have people over. You well, know? you guys are always feeding people. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it feels good to feed yeah, people. Yeah, I love doing so that. So you guys are like. But always. Like but but that's very different than going to a bunch of lunch and uh, take, taking the the. The whole chicken. Chicken um, right out of the thing. <laughs> Dang, man. Yeah, that was horrible. Oh, uh, that's funny. I uh, can't wait till that opens up. That's probably one of the places I'll go. What about like... Uh, I'm like, going to lose like 50 pounds and get it back. <laughs> like, what about like back. buffets in like Vegas? I haven't been to many buffets in Vegas. No? No, no, no. Oh, I, dude. You know, I love Vegas. I told you, I, I can gamble like crazy. But I... I gamble so much when I go that I don't go to the buffets or shows. Oh, you just you get stuck there. I get stuck gambling, dude. Dang. Yeah. I didn't know you had it that bad. I, it's not like I had it was like Jones in the go throw yeah. some crabs or something. But, but if you're there, if I'm there, man, it's, I, it's gonna like happen. it's like buffet for me, dude. It's like oh, let's go hit the table. See, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never understood that. I don't. I don't gamble. Dude, when you win, that's like... I don't gamble, but I will sit. I, I, I will quote my mom. You got to be in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know what I will do? I will sit at a... Like, you know those little bars that they have every now... Like, yeah. every place that kind of scattered around? And if you put, like, some money in the... What do you call those? The little computer yeah, like, yeah, yeah. game, video yeah, game? Yeah, yeah. And they give you free drinks? So I'll gamble for free drinks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's how it starts yeah. for me. <laughs> it's like, you, know, you hit Vegas and it's like... Uh, yeah, I'll take a, you know, whatever you yeah, got. Whatever, you yeah, whatever. And, so, and it's funny because my goal the whole time is to break even. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's always the goal yeah. in Vegas, right? Is break even. Yeah, have you, fun, break even. I mean, if you win, that's extraordinary. Usually usually I get like maybe two to three drinks. If you can pay for your weekend, that's a good weekend. Oh, man, man I don't want, I've never been able to do so, that. But I mean break even with the drinks that I order. You know so, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom was the same way. My mom could go to Vegas Sit at a 21 table, I could go up to bed, come back, and she'd be still at that 21 table, dude. And her goal was to always pay for the weekend. And half the time she did. She would just, yeah, once he gets. He, he's, he's, he's good. He's, that, his goal is just to do that. And then after that, he's like happy the whole I, weekend. I think that was kind of like what my mom did, too. Yeah. It was like, hey, if we can pay for the weekend, then I've done my. And then after that, he was super chill. Like, yeah. he just enjoyed it. Yeah, she would go shopping yeah, and yeah, hang yeah. out and do whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Last time I was there. See, but if it was me or you, we'd go try to do that first, and then we'd double down and lose. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying right here. Dude, so this is what I'm saying. Last time I was there, I was with a bunch of degenerate coaches, dude, and we were up there in Vegas for a football game, and, you know, the coaches, dude, put the kids in bed, and boom! We went hard. Yeah, we went hard, dude. And then, um, you know, I was just hanging out with them, and... and uh, Gabby comes out and is like, oh, man, I was playing roulette. That's the worst thing you can you can win. Fast, huh? You can win big, but you can lose very big, too. And, like, and it's, the odds are yeah. horrible, dude. Right. But I got up about two Gs off of, like, 200 bucks. Nice. Got up. Gabby's like, I'm taking, like, 500 because you're going to blow this off. <laughs> she's I know so you are. smart. And Look. she's like, I'm out of here. You know, we're yeah. going to go yeah. hang out. I'm, yeah, I got this. I got this. Came back. She's like, "How much?" I go, "I'm down 200." I dipped into the ATM. Oh, so you went like negative? <laughs> oh my god! Gary. I went two G's up and then 
two. You should have had two G's up and walked away. That's what everybody tells me. No? But you got me in it. Nobody morning. could do that, huh? No, nah, no. Nah. Nobody could do that. I'm playing with the house's money. That's dude. life, though, man. Like, that's how it works. Why is it like that? Yeah, and then I was there one time. My uh, cousin Brian also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he lived there and he was uh, a, a chef, studying to be a chef. And uh, when he lived there, me and uh, we went there for a football game, hung out. And I was hanging out with him, and Gabby was upstairs. He goes, don't pay for a room. Come stay with us. And Gabby would always tell me, you're going to drink too much. You're going to party. You're going to hang out with them, and you're going to. You're like a gremlin, dude. And, 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 and she goes, she goes I, no, we're not staying there. And I talked her into it. No, no, it's going to be cool. We're just going to drink in the bay. He's got a house, and we're going to stay here and whatever. So we get about halfway through, dude. We're hashing out stories, you know. We're cousins. We're, me and him are like brothers more yeah. than cousins. Well, that's how it is with my yeah, cousin. Yeah, maybe shed a tear, yep. hug it out that a little happens. bit. Yep. And then uh, all of a sudden about, I don't know, four, three or four in the morning. Ooh, you guys had a good one. He goes, let's go to the strip. And I go, oh, dude, she's going to divorce me. Like, <laughs> he's like, we'll be back for she Before knows. they wake up? Yeah. We're, I, got, I know this little thing right off the strip. Well, it's closer. Than, we'll, we'll be right there. Yo, devil, angel, devil, angel. Dude, he goes, dude. Got to I go, sleep, they're going to hear the car in the garage. He goes, no, we'll push the car out. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so I said. Well, you kidding. So, but me as an idiot, I'm like, yeah, that sounds good, dude. Let's do it, dude. Dude. So we pushed the car out. The garage door goes up. That was up. probably the loudest. That the was door. the loudest thing. And we were like, we push it out. I get out maybe a block and the text is like, don't come back. I got a text <gasps> like, don't come back. <laughs> so they told you because of the stupid garage door. <laughs> I knew it. Don't come back. <laughs> and you still went? I still went. I said, shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> At this point, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm head over heels in trouble. I was like, what is she going to do? I got the car. She ain't going to go oh, leave me and go home. Oh, man. I, uh, I was done I'm for, telling you, dude, for the rest of the week. You weekend. remember that movie, right? Gremlins? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> she, and you can't drink any water or else you're multiplying. So my, my wife would always say that I'm like Frank the Tank, you know, yeah, in old school. Yeah, Frank the Tank. Dude, once it hits my lips. It's so good when it touches my lips. <laughs> <laughs> that's how tank. I am, dude. Like, that's Seriously, that's how I am. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I got, I got stories from like as soon as oh, like pushing I Pushing the car out. That's, that's kind of... Wait. I do. Dude, I'm like... So that's genius? <laughs> Push the car out and then like dude, go? And, but the door, yeah, man, I mean... Dude, I'm like 39, 30, 35. <laughs> oh, it wasn't like we were in our 20s. It or... just happened. <laughs> yeah, degenerates, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, you know... Some things will never change, man. YOLO, right? You only live once, yo. Oh, <laughs> I can't do that. Imagine if I stayed up to 3 or 4 in the morning. I stay up late, but... 3 or 4 in the morning, dude. You know, man, I'd be Oh, hurting. dude, I was... And then my kids would be waking me up in the morning. Oh, forget it. I was done. I would, I would die. I would yeah, literally I die done. the next day. I was, I was hurting. I yeah. couldn't do that ever. I would either. literally die the next day. Um, yeah, but it was, I mean, <laughs> it, it's a good story, right? <laughs> it's, it's a, a good, good story. <laughs> so how did, how did you uh, make your way back? Uh, so when I said that, I was like, I showed my cousin like the text, and he was like, oh, man. And his wife texted him, too. Like, to like I don't know out. what it said yeah. you know, on his text. We only made it. To the corner where the liquor store was, got some more beer, <laughs> and we both said, "Hey, this is a story. They're gonna hear the real story." That's probably what ha- why I got oh. out of it. And I, it, we'll, we'll text them just say we ran out of beer and we're coming back. You know, mm-hmm. came back, but I did gamble. How did you gamble? We were in the liquor store oh. and they had slot machines in there. And whoosh, 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 I spent like forty bucks right there, and you lost them. I lost it all. Yeah. He bought the beer, so it was good. Wow. <laughs> True story, dude. <laughs> Can't make that one up. Uh, oh, me and my cousin Brian, dude, we were together. We're in trouble, you know. He's 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 always been a kind of the 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 one who's like, screw it, let's do it, let's do it, and then eggs me on. Come on, come on, you can do. It. Oh, and then, dude, I'm such a inf- being. I love being influenced, dude. I'm just like. Okay, let's do it. Let's That's do it. crazy, man. Yeah, I, uh, I'm like thinking like, yeah, because usually I would, do, especially like as I'm getting older, 
like birthdays. I know some people don't even celebrate their birthdays. They're like, it's just an extra well, day. Well, this or is whatever. where I was going with this. Yeah, uh, what do you do for celebrating your birthday? Well, I, you know, I, like in the middle, like so, like between like thirty five until now, um, I'm just taking it more serious. Like, dude, it's an extra year I'm alive, man. So like, I, I usually want to do something. Um, always, no matter what it is, always I always have dinner at my mom's. So you like to celebrate your birthday? I do, I do because, uh, like I said, like I hit thirty. And from 30 on, it just, it really, it means something to be alive, dude. Like, it, what I mean by that is, like, 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 I made it another year, and I'm thankful for it. So I'm like, dude, I want to I wanna do something, you know what I mean? Whether it's go camping, whether it's go on a trip, uh, like, you know, like stuff I told you that I like to do, you know. But it's, I always try to do something, right? But now that the COVID and all this craziness... Um, for sure, go to dinner at my mom's. We well, always I got that. you Friday. We're going to do another uh, podcast. Yeah, and, that's true. And I'm, 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 I'm going to um, take care of you, I know, man. And I know my wife has a, um, a few days off. So I don't know. Whatever she wants to do, man. I'm cool. You know? like, I like it. 40. I got involved with like martial arts and Krav Maga. Right. And uh, I was like, I need my black belt by the time I'm 40. I need... This and that and this. Um, so it, was, it wasn't quite my black belt. It was brown belt. Um, but I also ran a 13-mile Tough Mudder the week before my brown oh, that's belt. that's cool. I uh, did a hey, couple fun runs. Brown belt's no joke, man. Uh, dude, that was probably the best, like, the brown shape. Belt is, and brown belt's no joke. I, could fi- I was like, I felt like I could go through anybody right there. Yeah, when you get to brown, at least it's how I remember it. When you get to brown... It's like, that's like the, like, you, like, it's for real. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the, yeah, we actually, to, when you get to blue, is the point of no return. When you get to brown, you're more solidified and you feel like, you feel now. Like, you, you know, like in the Matrix, he goes, he's starting to believe. Yeah. Like, that's how it is when you're in brown. Like, you're like, all right, I do well, know that's something. How, that's I what could you do see stuff. here when you see our brown belts. And you can tell some of them, dude, are like, damn, this COVID, man, yeah, is killing cause me. Because it's holding them. Right holding now. them back. Yeah. yeah. They could have, some of them could be... Yeah, some of them could be testing already. Yeah. Um, Actually, the big group can be testing already. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, yeah. ooh, man. And uh, which is all right. I, I like that. I like and then, hey, and then so that's how you feel in Brown? Like, oh, he's starting to believe. Like in yeah. the Matrix, like I say, you start, you're starting to f- find out that you really do know something. And then you get to Black. And then you're like, oh, shit. But then I was telling you... I don't I- know anything. <laughs> Yeah, black belt because, because because then it like opens this like whole new. Well, then, and you're then, just like man, there's so much. But then more you start having do. your own theories and you start having your own you know ways of doing things and teaching. You can play around. And, you can play around with stuff a little bit. Yeah, different. and then you start thinking about it differently, and you start looking at other martial arts to pr- incorporate. Yeah, what especially you, in our group, you know? the way we are. Yeah, like, we have, we're always like bouncing ideas off each other and sharing information. We have a good group of martial artists. Yeah, and like, exactly. And so, like, then, then it's like, man, I, yeah, I'm a black belt. and Yeah, I'm an instructor. But there's so much, like, for me to still learn, you know? And you're always learning. You're always trying to do something. Like, tomorrow, um, oh, yeah, you got my text? Yeah, I don't know if I can make that, though. I know. And in the morning. I know. But I just thought it'd be worth it. No, know? no, I'm happy you text me. Yeah, that makes me more happy than anything, dude, when I get texts yeah, like cause, that. Yeah, uh, because Chris, Chris is like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow for your birthday? And I'm like, you want to spar? And uh, he's like, I'll be here. He's like, all right, let's do it. And so I text all the guys, all the instructors. And uh, I mean, I figured getting the instructor training in, that'd be good. We usually do it on Wednesday nights. The instructor training, um, but uh, I won't be here, so I was like, you know. Oh, you're gonna be out late tomorrow night, huh? Well, no, it's just I mean I'm sure that yeah, I, you're I'm gonna go to dinner with the family, with, yeah, with the family and, yeah. and all that. I will um, actually we'll be at my mom's having dinner. That's cool. They, um, they do a home cooked dinner for me. That's good, man. Yeah. And they always ask me what I want. My brother usually gets uh, either carnitas or enchiladas, and uh, hey, you gotta tell us that bubblegum story again about your brother. <laughs> <laughs> another oh, time. When I another to, time. Another what, time. You mean when I went to the AMPM and I stole bubblegum? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's just uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good because I'm already like thinking about. Oh man, we're gonna have an awesome meal. My dad goes all out. He cooks literally for like 20 people, really? and it's only like six or eight of us. No, it's eight, uh, eight of us. No, uh, uh, ten of us. It's ten of us, and uh, he cooks for like 20 people. So we all have food to take home after. I don't know what I did on my last birthday. All I know is Shane and Gabby got me a good gift. They always What's get, your birthday? Uh, February. February. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Eighth. Yeah. February eighth. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aquarius, baby. Yeah. Um, 
They got me cool cookies last year. The reason why I know that is because baby Luca's birthday is February 7th. 7th, man. See, I'll never forget it now. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be just like me, wild and... Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice, no, dude. No, no choice. You can't hang out with Uncle Gary. <laughs> no choice, bro. Uh, nah, you can do whatever you want. Well, uh, what you call it? And Shane got me these cookies, and they're shaped like little little uh, emoji shits. <laughs> and it said, uh, Dad, you're the best dad. You're the... And then I have the emoji cookies right there. You're the shit, you know? Oh, I'm that's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got a gift once from uh, Stan Hill. Uh-oh. Uh, I didn't know it was a gift from him until three months later. I didn't tell anybody <laughs> that I got the gift. I didn't... <laughs> what the hell was it? It was over the. It was through the mail, right? And it was just like exquisite, like packaging. Like it was just like, dude, somebody put some time into this. Like, oh, maybe it's one of the parents sent me some. Yeah, I don't know, like a thank you or whatever, you know. And I'm like eager opening it. And I open it, and it's chocolate, uh, but it's not cool. <laughs> I can't even mention what, what it is. <laughs> I can't like mention what it is. Come on, what is it? I held that. Oh, like, dude, somebody hates me out there. Or <laughs> somebody like sent me this. because so he's been waiting. Like, he was waiting. Dude, he's just letting me stew, man. <laughs> and then finally, he goes, "Hey, uh, hey, Mr. Abel, what's up, man? I was like, hey, what's up, Sam? Um, uh, and I thought he was gonna ask me something about the mat or whatever. And he goes, "Hey, man, just curious. Like, just like nonchalant. Hey man, just curious. Uh, did you get something in the mail? And I was like, oh, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, and then oh, we started busting up, and That's we talk funny. about it all the time now. But That's funny. but uh, he got me good, man. He got me real good. Yeah, dude, we're nine years apart. I'm forty nine. You're not forty nine. I'm forty eight. You're not. Almost fifty. You serious? Almost fifty, dude. Yeah, I know like, it's hard to tell. You act like a twenty five year old, man. That's right, man. Yeah, totally. That's what this keeps me young. <laughs> um, yeah, in my forties, dude. It hasn't been a good time. I haven't. I haven't liked my fortunes. I like that I have a more clear view of no, no, who, but you who got I am. Your, you got your black belt and all kinds of stuff. No, there's been some good things. Yeah. There's been a lot of crap in my the last eight years, dude. Yeah. Forties. Yeah. Is it's. <clears throat> I mean, I had cancer. My mom had cancer. Um, yeah, um. Whatever. All kinds of stuff, dude. That just was like whirlwind, you know. Um, yeah, I, but I did get my black belt. I got third degree black belt. I got second degree black belt, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was no joke. My tests were no joke. Uh, I, I saw some people's tests for third degree black belt. I was like, or a second degree black belt. I was like, oh, sweet. I just got to show up and, and then like, yeah, Lynn, me and Lynn said the same thing. Second degree, why go? We don't have to do that much. We'll test. We'll get physical, whatever. Sure, right. Dude. Hey, listen. I don't know where you guys heard that it was going to be easy. I don't. We watched. Hey, listen. Well, even the level one test is like, <laughs> this is crazy here. Well, we ended up doing another level one test. Oh, man. <laughs> we were hurting. Hurting. I did my second degree, why well, Six months after I got a tracheotomy. I was there for your... Uh, well, actually, I was there for all of your tests. Uh, but you were? Yeah, I don't I was, remember. Yeah, I was there for all your tests. Um, yeah, I was attacking too. Uh, I, I was there. Uh, I even held gloves for you. The last time you did the shoot house, uh, hopefully we're not giving too much information. The last time I, you did your shoot house, uh, you came out after fighting. Um, so like you went through the house and you had to fight in every room. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you came out and you were like... <laughs> Like beasting it, like you, you, you were somewhere else. You know, it's like I, that. I it's why I it's don't like remember. that eleventh or thirteenth yeah, hour, or whatever. It was the overnighter. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. I'm talking about. And uh, so you come out, and then uh, Bo looks at me and he goes, uh, "Grab the focus mints." So like you think you're over, like it's over because you're out of the house. You made it out. Yeah. And then I go go, and I start calling out the the combos right. And then so you like start going hard right, and then uh, then we, we stopped. But it was just to kind of mess with you a little bit because like. You were thinking that you were uh, that it was over, and you came out like, you know, like salivating. <laughs> that man. sounds like me. Yeah, and like... then uh, then we did the combos for a little bit, and then you come back down, and then so we stopped. But no, yeah, no, I was there for you. <laughs> I was there. I was there for Lynn and all that too. I got blasted on one. Some of those tests are awesome, dude. I've gotten blasted by people. Just I remember uh, on my black belt test on the overnighter, um, I was about to exit. <laughs> out of nowhere I see little spots I'm like whoa dude and I turn around and I just shell up and I'm just like because I can't see right I mean I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying not to give too much away but I can't see 
So I'm just shelling. I'm doing like an active shell. And uh, like I'm starting to throw blows, but I'm just kind of doing it in the dark because you can't <laughs> see. And then I feel again, like body shot. And then I, so I finally, and then I, I hear the door like unlock. So I finally, I'm able to like, I, I literally like uh, just dove out, rolled out, stood up. And then like, because when you get out, right, it's all bright. And I'm just like, all right, like it's safe now, right? So, but later on I find out, uh, Fucking Chris, dude, out of nowhere, dude. Just oh, Newton was being yeah. I was in that. I was in that. I was he got that. me good. He was, I thought it was. Uh, he I thought was, it was hiding in the corner. He was in the corner. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was yeah, yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Mr. Jimmy. Yeah, and it wasn't. And I asked Mr. Jimmy, and he goes, "No, it wasn't me." No, Chris, and then Chris was all Chris in black. Was, yeah, and he was in black. the corner. Yep, and he got me good. And just, just as you're getting ready to yep. go out, he, I was about to grab the door because I thought I fought everybody. I yeah, did everything yeah, I had yeah. to do. And I was just like, hey, I was yeah. the one who pushed you then, towards boom. towards the door, yeah. like, like keep your hands up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I was done, and I was like, all right, okay. so like, s- I was like dying, you know. Same kind of scenario, right? Yeah. And we're in, and I'm coming through the shoe house, and the first person I see is Nick, Nick, uh, uh, Graham. Yeah. And I'm like, what's up, Nick? Like, hey, you know, I'm always yeah. like, hey, what's up? And he just goes, <laughs> boom. And- and almost knocked me out, man. I got, I mean, it was his left hand. Nick, Nick was the first guy I got going into the house. Yeah. And uh, he's just like standing there. And then he just straight up shoots for my legs. Like just full on. He's a big, strong yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm able to, to get, I mean, the whole time we're just, he made me work, man. We're like slamming into the walls. and Dude, even oh, on man. my black belt one, I don't know if you were there, but I, I got hyperventilated, dude. I almost uh, hyperventilated. Was yeah. Reggie freaking attacked me, <laughs> held my legs down, and I couldn't get up. And I was like panting like crazy because I was so like, uh, yeah. and I couldn't catch my breath, dude. I couldn't catch. It. I felt like I was underwater. Like the good thing is like like so when you're in those, the only people in the building for those tests are this are tight knit group, like people that are either black belts instructors or whatever, right? right? So it has to be that way in order to keep the like the safety yeah uh, in check and. It has to be the, that way in order to be able to grow from it. Because otherwise, it just becomes a brawl. Like, otherwise, it just becomes like a survival thing. Uh, it's so, pretty much a brawl, but yeah, it's, it's organized. But it's organized. Yeah, it's, it's and, organized. And, and there's a, there's a, there's a method to the chaos, yeah. for sure. But, man, those are some good memories. Yeah, man. those it sucks, so, but they're good. So I tell people this all the time. Even though I hate the beginning of testing... Testing still one of my favorite things to yeah, do. So the beginning sucks because like you're like you have that anxiousness built it's up. Anxious, yeah, yeah you're anxious and anxiety. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then like once you once you go, like once you you're going, then you're going, man. Dude, I'm all about the process. So if there's a process with something and trying to get there, oh uh, man, that's my favorite thing to do is be, uh, like become like prepared and being prepared. Uh. You want to know what I liked about testing? Like, because you know there's different ways to test right groups, but. I used to like it when everybody would just sit around the mat. So everybody is looking at that person that oh, got really? called I up. I hated that. I love that. I hated and then that. you do your technique, you know, whatever it is they call out. Cause you don't, first off, you don't know what they're going to call out to test you on. And then secondly, you know, you're being watched by everybody from people testing from lower rank all the way to black belt and above. Yep. So you're like showing everybody where you're at. Every, you know, your instructor's not the only one judging you, your, your whole co- uh, cohort and your peers and, and the lower ranks are, are all judging you. They're all watching, can this guy really, is he really who they say he is or whatever, you know? I used to love that. Like that pressure, oh, I, I used to I, love that. You know I would, I love? My energy would just be through the you roof You know what I that. love is I always get uh, people that when I instruct them and then when I've tested and they come and actually see me test, like I'm a different guy when I hit a switch. I've always told you I have a switch. And when people see that switch, I get like, Whoa! What happened yeah, to Gary? That's a you good know? thing. That's, that's that, that switch is a good thing. Yeah, you know, and especially uh, for self defense. Yeah, for sure. So uh, how do we get into talking about I testing? Know. I don't know how we. Got I think because we miss it, man. To be honest, uh, it could be. Oh, you know, you. I know how we got into it is because I was telling you how my fortieth birthday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you got any plans? Like you're you're not forty yet, but you're getting close. I'm getting close. Any any uh like. Like thirty five, I said, oh, I'm gonna, uh, dude. My goal was to lose a hundred pounds, and then get to, you know, uh, black belt and and uh, do one tough mutter. I did several, lost a hundred pounds, got my brown belt, not my black belt yet. I got I ended up getting a couple years later, um, but I had set that goal by forty. That was my like laser focus, dude, right there. 
Yeah. Um, so the, the question is if, if I have any plans. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do you I have, have like, like a focus? I work, yeah, I work. So I, well, you got this now. And well, I, think... I work I work a little bit different. I work uh, like it's almost like five-year plans. Yeah. So like I always like see where I'm going to be five years from now and then 10 years and then 20 years. So oh, it's like, really? uh, yeah. So like I, I feel I really strongly believe that the, the, the decisions we make now will have a big impact 20 years from now. But but 20 years is too too much of a time gap to, too to, much to, to judge. Yeah. Between them. So you you need to put it like in smaller amounts so that you could check to see if you're even making Close progress, or right? You yeah. Change your whole, path yeah. or whatever. Yeah, because you have to. If you don't check that, then dude, 20, never, 20, 20, 20 years will twenty years will pass by, but oh. you'll never know what happened in between that. You dude, know I, I mean? feel like I, I worked for the city like just yesterday. like I just started yesterday. And and you're I'm, almost done. I'm like seventeen years <laughs> in, dude, and and I, I know how that feels. Like today yeah. me and my buddy were just talking about that at work. We're like Dude, we're the old dogs. When I came in here, I was like 30. And they, we were talking about all these old guys. Like, <laughs> look at that old guy. I'm never going to be like that. Now I'm just as grumpy. And I'm just as like, you know. Yeah. No, I, um, it, it, things have changed a little bit. Like, so now my project, my projections and like how I check those benchmarks will probably be a little bit different. Meaning that I'll have to be doing like maybe yearly <laughs> yearly checks now because the way everything is and the economy and the covid thing and all that uh, i'll have to make sure that these benchmarks are reached within like within the year like i'll have to make a like a really big yeah, look what, at what's going on what, you know? what, what i'm figuring with all our stuff that's going on here is like it's rushing us a little bit and just because you don't know what's gonna happen next week yeah. to the week after that or whatever so that's what, like at this point any opportunity you get to do something productive, you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't know if tomorrow you don't. Yeah. So and, and we literally tomorrow we could all be back at home calling each other, like doing a Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if we have an opportunity, like today, um, I was in there working and uh, in the office, and Christina and Brett are like, oh, "Are you going to do your podcast today? Like, you have a lot to finish." <laughs> I know. I get reminded. That's and, what I get. And, and Christina tells she me. She tells you. She's like, are you gonna? I was like, yeah, no, I'm not. Gonna. That's part of work. I said, and then Brett's like, oh yeah, that's fun stuff though. I'm like, these guys don't get it. I don't even tell them anything anymore. I just like walk away, because it's like this whole thing is fun for me. Like well, literally running this business, even though right now I'm not paying myself or anything, it's fun, but it's work. I you know, have to put you know, in it's twelve a, hours, fourteen hour days. I see what you mean by that because I took it off your hands. I said, let me promote it. Let me do yeah. all that. Let me. And that's cool. Too. By the way, it's really cool to see someone else that has a similar vision. Because, dude, when you post stuff, it crap, man, it makes me crack up. Because I'm like, dude, that's what I was thinking. Uh, and, or like, yeah, you know? I was like, uh, I'm sitting there like, <laughs> let me do something, you yeah. know. And no, now, thank you. Yeah. But, but now, like, because we're, I mean, we got a computer in our hand all the time. Yeah. And, and I was at work today in a little meeting. And I was like, you know, <laughs> checking our faces. Like, yeah. I'm like, we're almost at 100, yeah. you know. But, like, you know, like, like literally Brett said, Oh, that's all fun stuff. And I'm like, dude, like they don't get it. Like it, All this is fun to me, but it's still work. You know what I mean? Well, you got to do it. No one else is going to do I it I think you. when we first started, it was more like, let's see what we do. Yeah, let's see where we go. Let's see this. where we go. I think right now we got a bug in us, both of us. And it's just like when we started martial arts, it's like we can make something out of this. And that's where we're at right now. What I really like, too, is that it really does uh, unite in so many ways uh, the studio the the not only the staff the instructors but like the student body they you know they're getting an insight to the way we think and why we do certain things on the mat because like listen the way you teach whether you, whether you believe this or not like we all have different styles of teaching a lot has to do with where we come from what we did oh completely what, what perspectives we've we talked have. about that yeah. before what perspectives we've had like, you know, especially if you get an instructor like uh, like someone that has like a military background or someone that grew up in maybe an area that wasn't the best area like you're gonna get some gritty stuff and you're probably gonna learn some really cool things about how to survive the streets or how to understand the streets a little bit yeah, better. you see it uh, a little differently. And then you, you get an instructor that is in law enforcement, and then you get, like, another perspective on it. Um, so it, it's it's really cool to, to understand that. And for other people uh, that are that are students to hear us talk about where we come from, what we do, how we think, what we laugh about, what we don't laugh about, because it'll, I think they'll understand us a little bit better when we're teaching well, and putting them through hell. Also, what, what helps is when you get a little feedback, dude, negative or positive. We've been getting a lot of feedback lately. Yeah. It's kind of cool, man. And, and whether you get it, but it just, it's like, for me, because I am a little bit on that rebel side, and if somebody's like, you guys should do this, or you guys should, 
I, I'm not grinning because they're telling me what I should do or talk about or whatever. I'm grinning because I'm like, eh, you listened. Yeah. I got you. You're listening. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Ryan, uh, last night, was giving me a hard time in a good way. He was, he was, we were laughing about it. But I'm like, the, the first thing I literally said was, because he, he mentioned something on a previous podcast, and I turned around. I'm like, you listened? <laughs> and we started cracking up. He's like, yeah, yeah, I listened, I listened. I was like, all right. Well. And, and you know what's fun is, is uh, I'm getting into all this Instagram and Facebook, and I've been really poo-pooing on that stuff for the past couple of years. Like, ah, social media. Don't like it? Uh, no, I just don't like all the negative stuff uh, about it. Well, they, but yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cool positive stuff. But I'm having fun right now with all of it because I'm posting. Yeah. And, we're, and so when you have to keep moving, dude, because I got a teacher and it's hot as hell. In yeah, here. you got about uh, 10 minutes or so. So you uh, get some water. Fireworks? <laughs> you guys do fireworks? No. So, um, like, uh, where I live, they're legal. Like, if you buy them at a, one of those yeah, like, yeah, yeah. things, but not like the ones that shoot up in the air and stuff. But the funny thing is that. The ones that are illegal are the only thing that they burn. Like yeah. they, it's all like literally. I, I, we're in our it's backyard. Like Disneyland, dude. Lately. We're in our backyard, and it's just we're getting a show. Like like literally thousands of dollars being burned in the air because like it's like you all know popping. when I was growing up, I could get on top of my roof and watch the Disneyland fireworks yeah. every night, dude. For all summer it used to just be during it's the summer, crazy. and now they're not even gonna be. You on. know what I do uh, before uh, the Fourth of July, like before evening time, like when I know that they're gonna start popping off the fireworks and stuff. Uh, in the morning, I always get up and I water, water is, everything, yeah. and I hit the roof, yep. and then I do it again right before the sun drops. I'll hit the sprinklers yep. uh, in the morning and yeah. the evening. And what sucks is that my pool, man, it gets a whole bunch of the like the bottle rockets, yeah, all that stuff that yeah, it all falls in there, and then my poor, you know, guy that goes out to clean it, <laughs> and and usually if if it falls like on a weird day where he's not going to be there till like maybe another four or five days, I have to go in there and get it all because it goes into the filter, dude. It's a mess, dude. So, not looking forward to that. Yeah. Let's cool. take a break. Let's, Let's take call a break. it. Yeah, that way you got some time. Uh, we'll get back to you guys uh, in a minute. What's going on? We're uh, back. We're back, man. Hey, so you were just teaching the class right now. Uh, so, the reason why we take a break uh, during this segment, this podcast, is because Gary goes and teaches live out on the mats, and we have a hybrid program too where um, he's teaching on the mats, and then people at home can watch him as well. So that's where he just came back from, and he comes back all pumped up and, and ready to go. And today you had an assistant, a uh, fellow instructor. Esperanza tore it up, man. I, I, I hear that Esperanza's quite the beast. Yeah. And uh, and uh, <laughs> it's funny because uh, after class, my father, I don't know if you guys don't know, my father also trains here. He's a green belt here. And um, he was telling uh, Brett, uh, one of the other instructors, that that was the hardest class that he's done since – since he, him coming back, and then Brett's like, like he took it like a personal <laughs> challenge. He's like, wait till you go to my day class on Monday or whatever day he teaches. Oh, and uh, we're like, oh, man, everybody's raising the bar now. Yeah, but that's that's how it works. It is. How it we works. all push each other. You see that? Like someone so, does a real good job, and you're like, all right, I can't I can't stay too far behind that. I got to I gotta step it up, you know? So I ain't going to lie, dude. Once when uh, we first started off the Zoom classes, I'd sit in and be like, What's Ryan teaching? Yeah. Uh, let me see what he's got going on here. Because teaching hey, uh, Zoom classes A lot of people really don't know hard, that. Man. It's tough, yeah. dude, to teach on Zoom. And uh, took some stuff away from it. Like, okay, I need to make sure and do this. You know, and, 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 yeah, it's hard. But then it makes you step up your game a little bit. Like That's good, right. though, because that's what makes us all better, right? Because they're like, look, so the instructor steps up their game because they're like, we're going to do this, like, fire class. And then all the students have to go through it, right? And it makes everybody better because it's they're pushing them through it, and everybody gets better. Dude, yeah. I can't wait. Like I had all kinds of like like lesson plans set already. I have a book with just lesson plans just for our new facility. Like we have so much space outside. Oh, we have a ton of space. Uh, you We're know, a block away from the beach. Alleyway, we have walls galore. You know? Oh man, I have it's so. I think we might hit outside. If I don't have anybody on Zoom class on Thursday, which I've been lucky that we haven't, I think we might do a little social distancing uh, outside? on the wall. Somewhere. Very cool. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, do some some. Feet, and it's nice out. Guys. Like, especially around this time, outside, it's beautiful, man. So, come Friday, it's supposed to be like 90 degrees, dude. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Dude. We're dude. hitting a heat wave here this week. We're going to have to get, hey, listen, send this out to somebody that owns like an air conditioning company or something. Some of the little portable air conditioner in <laughs> here, man. We're going to die. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, you listen. Rain or shine, I ain't stopping. If we got to be with our T-shirts off in here and like <laughs> freak flag going, <laughs> I'm cool. Could you imagine doing a podcast? Because <laughs> we're like dying. We're drinking our bubbly. You know, this company is going to sponsor us, by the way. We're going to get this company. Uh, yeah. We really do enjoy this. <laughs> I, I Cheers. I was so happy when uh, I saw it in the fridge, man. I was like, oh, we got some. Nice. Dude, Jerry. They're all good. I, I, they are. I don't have one that I dislike. My favorite one, though? Whatever the hell you bought the last time sucked. My, I know. It did, <laughs> it did. We actually, and it was highbrow crap. We, we actually returned it, and this, they gave us our money back. This is like like low-end sparkly That's water. That's what Christina told me. She told me that it's like super cheap. I'm like, what? <laughs> because for the other one, I paid like a ton of money. Yeah. And she's like, dude, this is like half the price, and it tastes way better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's no sugar in it. No, it's just, you know, it's yeah, just the just straight simple. up carbonated yeah, water, man, with a little flavor yeah, in it. Yeah. But my favorite one, though, is peach. And the second favorite is cherry. So peach and cherry. And uh, blackberry is not too far away from that. I like lime, black cherry, black for cherry. sure. Yeah. And then uh, strawberry. Yeah. Strawberry. Right on. So, Bubbly, thank you for the sponsorship. I'm putting it out there to the universe. Um, even if you just bring us a case, it hasn't happened yet, guys. Yeah, yeah. Even if you just bring us a case, <laughs> but you know like, how I am. <laughs> hey, we had a question, dude, on What's up? Uh, IG. What you got? Uh, from am, am I gonna am I gonna be on the hot seat right now? No, no, no nothing ah, big, okay, nothing big. Right, from Soul Means Son. Oh, cool. Okay, what's up? What do we got? And we both know her. I just I'm gonna give her IG Instagram name because oh, cool. I feels like I, we're official when I give an IG Instagram name. <laughs> okay. She says. What defines your taste in music? These are three part questions. Oh, geez. What defines your taste in music? You know what? Um, so I, I think that if I have to do a broad stroke over it, because we, I mean, as you know, we listen to so many different types of music. Like between you and I, we listen to a, like everything, yeah, right? Yeah. And some of it's really raw and gritty. And then there's other parts of the music that we listen to that's really refined and, and, uh, and beautiful, right? To, yeah. I, mean, yeah, yeah. It's, I guess that's the only way I can put it. But if I had to just do a broad stroke, um, I would say that I listen to music that speaks to my soul. I don't, I, 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 I'm a person that, that plays my music loud, whether it's that gritty music or whether it's that really refined music, but I play it loud always because I like to feel it. I like to feel that rolling bass. I like to, to feel the, the, the cries of the, like, the, if it's violin or whatever it is, I like to feel it. So if, if my soul feels it, I play it. And, and if, and if, I'm in a place where I can listen to it loud, even better for me. Oh, uh, you know, so I, I think defining, if you love music, like, I don't think you can really define it. I don't think it's like... My uh, definition, like I said, is to speak to my soul, man. Yeah, man. So growing up, I mean, I guess, you know, when my parents' music became my music was like in the sixth grade, like, you know, oh, yeah, I, I like this music. I like that you said that, when my parents' music became my music. Yeah, and then all of a sudden... Right around high school, you start picking genres. You know, it was like funk and hip hop, you know, right in high school. But then as you grow a little older, maybe just out of high school, and you start meeting different people because you got jobs and you're working with different types of people. Right. Like, then all of a sudden, I went into a little bit like I did when I was younger, too. I had punk rock around me all the time, but right around 19, when I left high school, I started hanging out with different types of people. And then I found like punk rock and all that. But high school, I ain't gonna lie, my favorite. Because the next question is who's your favorite artist? You know? Oof. Uh, but in high school, I fell in love with this guy, it was Bob Marley, dude. I was like infatuated with the man, man. And then I've seen like several document documentaries. Listen to his music. Sunday mornings are made for Bob. You know, me and Bob feel each other yeah. on that one, you know. And, it, you know, in high school, I was probably a little lifted anyways to enjoy his music a little bit more. Right but, on, man. But Bob, for sure. It's really hard, though, to pick one. Because, like, I could pick one from each genre. So can I. You I know can what I'm too. I can, too. I, I, I mean... Um, if I had to say, like, one all-time for me, um, it would probably have to be Carlos Santana. All right, like if it's like one in general, Carlos Santana. Um, but if you look at his music, it's so eclectic. Like he chooses from so much, and he's worked with hip hop artists. He's worked with 
uh, Spanish uh, uh, speakers, and he's worked with like it's just, uh, you know, African kind of Very beat and music. Dude. Yeah, so he chooses from so many things, and that's yeah. kind of like my flavor of music. I, my my ears are always open to like I said anything that speaks to my soul. So, but you know, if we're talking about like hip hop and stuff, oh, like, you know, I, dude, I could go on, man. Like Wu Tang, I love Wu Tang Clan. It's so gritty, and it's just the 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 lyrics are are. Oh, they're just Dude, legit I, can, to I me. can tell you. I like Wyclef John. I don't know if you know who that is. I do. Yeah, I, I like Wyclef, man. Like, Wyclef is legit. And he's kind of out there, too. Like, he's really eclectic. And it's just, uh, man, I could just, you know, and then for the Spanish side of me, like the, the, the uh, you know, all the Spanish music I listen yeah, to, yeah. like Juan Gabriel, Vicente Fernandez. Uh, man, I could go on and on. I, so it's really hard for me to choose one, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, man, same here. But I told you before, I'm a Motown kid. My mom loved Motown. So Smokey Robinson's definitely... No, no, you, you got to know this. He, he, uh, Smokey's my man, dude. Smokey, man. You just call me Smokey. You, you should dude. see him outside of this. When we're not recording or talking, he's, he's singing over there and dancing. And... Dude, I, I, uh, <laughs> my mom loved all these dudes, right? And But... Something about Smokey just caught my ear at a very young age. Very young age, like 10, 11. Uh, then, of course, my generation, because I am like nine years older than you, you know, uh, MJ, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, man, of Yeah, course. I went to the Victory Tour concert. I've, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of, you know, Jacksons or... Yeah, growing up, I think I had that little jacket. And yeah, the little, thriller jacket. Yeah, man, like, yeah. that was like... And then, you know, uh, come on, you know, in high school, getting to see Prince. Be like, oh, I like a lot of the Prince stuff, too. Prince, yeah, there's some pretty cool stuff. There's some stuff that's out there, and then there's some real cool Prince, stuff Prince, when love. he first started, people don't realize that he was straight up funk, dude. There was no out there weird stuff that he did for a while. It was straight up funk, dude. Right the on. Time, uh, another group that I've seen, I love the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 dude. I, I can I can go on and on. Yeah. Different genres, like you said, you know. Yeah, that's why it's, it's kind of hard to choose. Like, so I think the question was like, like, who's your favorite, right? But God, there's so many favorites. And right? I think if you love music, there's not really a favorite. Dude. Yeah. There's there's eras that you have yeah. pockets. Yeah, you know? eras. There you go. It really is, and it, that's not to say that you don't love a certain genre yeah. more than another. But I think, you know, as you get older, dude, like. Like when Bruno Mars came out, I was like, "What? This guy just brought back the '80s and I'd '90s." I'd still love to see him live, man. So would I. He, I never got the privilege to he do did that. A, he last year he did a, uh, a stint in Vegas all summer, and he played all his music. Like lately, he's only been playing whatever uh, for, off his latest album. Mm-hmm. He played all his music. Oh man! You know another person that I would love to see that I'd never been able to catch, and I've been looking for, but never been able to catch. Well, especially now with the COVID stuff, but. But even before the COVID, like just even my wife looking, uh, Lauren Hill. Oh, dude, it's yeah, been like you'll impossible. probably never, you'll probably never see her because AJ got you know, to go to oh, a, really? like a private, like it was like a real intimate, like just a small gathering, and he has yeah, a shirt she, that he wears every now and then. Little, little no fat. And he shows off because he. That means if you have that shirt, that means that you were there for that. I don't miss like. Oh. She's tied to the Marleys forever, man. I don't know. Tied to Marley forever. Hey, she should do her thing, though, man. We need her to come back out. And, and yeah, she's a little. Yeah, no, she's, she, she needs meds and stuff, man. She's oh, really? Little, I didn't know. Yeah, that. she's a little bit. I uh, thought she was just being. Um, I thought that she was. She just chose like the like not to be in that. No, lifestyle. she's. Uh, I forgot. Like manic depressant. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Man, she's so talented, though. Yeah. Man. Um. Who up, dude? So like. Run DMC. Yeah. Love Run DMC. Met DMC several times. Yeah. I sent you a picture. I sent you on your IG. Yeah. On your, uh, met him. Oh, yeah. Today, uh, you sent him today. Actually. Yeah, I sent yeah. you a bunch <laughs> a of pictures. A bunch of different ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met him a couple times. Yeah. Uh, another true story. He took Shane's, uh, he was promoting a, a hip hop comic. Wrote it, signed it to me. Thanks for being a fan. La, 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 la. And Shane goes, Here, I want to give you my comic. He looked at Shane. He goes, How old are you, kid? And Shane goes, I'm 16. He goes, I am 45 years old, and I just made a comment. You're, six, you're telling me you're 16 and you just did what I did? <laughs> That's so dope. And he just rolled his eyes. He goes, give me that. I'll read it. And then he gave he signed he the signed book. His, and, yeah, no, he's... no, he signed one for him. And oh, gave that's him a dope. Book. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I got to meet him. Um, true story, my, my stepdad, 
uh, was a roadie for America, the band America. So we always had music on in the uh. house. I'm, so we've already said this, soul meets son. Uh, neither one of us play instruments, but we've talked about playing instruments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I think it was on podcast 10, something uh, like that. Yeah. We talked about instruments. Uh, shout out to uh, Francisco Rios. Yeah. He owns the, um, the uh, music uh, place that... that uh, where, where they do all that, you know, he was, yeah. he's the one that's always telling us about to, to go try some, some music out in this place. Uh, God, what's the name of this place? Westminster, um, Academy, Westminster Academy, the Westminster Academy, the arts. I, I'm I sorry, Francisco. Know. I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll put it though. I'll do a little, yeah, uh, a little research. Yeah. I'll do, I'll put it on the bottom though. So you can just click uh, on it. Yeah. And just to go back over that, uh, I, I, of course I want to play instrument man i don't know why i never did when i was younger i i, I wish you know? that's why we like music so much because we said it right because yeah. we don't know how to do it we, ourselves we can't do it ourselves yeah that's one of those things where that's why i love art too because i can't draw francis though you. you said that you were going to teach me how to play the harmonica and i'm going to hold you to it <laughs> oh well, i forgot about that yeah we're right? calling you little stevie yeah, wonder yeah, yeah. yeah. call ray charles yeah. over here. no that was like episode like yeah that was like five or five six, or six. Or yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that was when we first started yeah. um yeah so Daniela, thank you for the question. Uh, Soul cool. meets son. That's her IG account. IG, name. I don't. Uh, if you got a question, man, hit hit us up on one of the accounts and uh, we'll answer it. We'll try yeah, to. Absolutely. We'll try to. <laughs> we'll do our I know. Best. <laughs> I know somebody's gonna say something. <laughs> we'll, we we'll do our best to answer what we can answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, so I went home the other day and we started talking about movies. And uh, I went home and I have Apple TV and I was going through my Apple TV, and I always like when they do editors' picks and director's picks and and all that well they did aig afi's picks american film institute's picks top 100 movies Hmm. and i was like oh so i'm challenging you man go find that to afi's top 100 movies go on there see how many you've seen (laughs) and then go watch something because most of them are like from the 60s and 70s. Dude. That's okay. They got some good stuff. Oh, no, no. Great stuff. Yeah. So, so I mean, if you're into movies, if you're cyclophiliac like I am, like like into cinema, you know, and, and it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to go through this list. So I, I, I went to a film class 1996. I was in a film studies class, and I saw the original 100 that they put out mm. in ninety. It's changed since then. It's updated. So there's still things in there like they added Forrest Gump. They added uh, Forrest Gump. I just watched that. That's, yeah, that's I, what, I that's, watched that two weeks ago. That's one of the greatest no, movies ever, man. Last week. Yeah. This is top 100 I watched ever. it. I watched it with Jimena. Yeah. And Jimena loved it. Yeah, it's a great movie. She had some questions for me. Yeah. And there were some parts that were fast forward. But but it was it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. And she yeah. understood the friendship with Bubba, uh, Bubba Gump. Yeah. Bubba Gump thing, you know, the... the the uh, the fishing shrimp. <laughs> the, the shrimping boat I was gonna say fishing boat it's a shrimping boat and all that and I explained Barbecue to her that he shrimp. that he promised <laughs> that you know that yeah. he was gonna get the because she asked favorite, me why they why she got the boat my favorite part is uh, Lieutenant Dan <laughs> I promised you got magic you, legs I know he goes I <laughs> promised you I would come if you ever said you're gonna be a captain of a ship and I'd be your yeah. first mate and he goes. Just let me get on board and let me get my sea legs. And he goes, but Lieutenant Dan, you have no legs. No legs. <laughs> That's my favorite part of it. I love that. Uh, uh, there's so many parts of that movie, dude. I can go on and on about that one. I love it. It's like one of my favorite ones, man. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a long one, but you could it, that one I could sit through, man. That's a good one. Oh, no, no. The music in it? Yeah. If you get the soundtrack to that, that's a great soundtrack. Uh, but, yeah, so I went through it. Dude, I've seen about almost 40 of those movies. So I, I guess a task of going and going hard here this weekend, dude. That's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, well, it is a long weekend. I mean, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we all love movies in my house, so I'll oh, throw that. Have some I'll marathon. throw that challenge Blue out. Marathon. Yeah, I'll throw that challenge out. That, like, hey, who wants to see the top one hundred, dude? I mean, and there's some serious. There's like Gone with the Wind that's like five hours long, and like like uh, you know, Apocalypse Now, you know, and then. Uh, it goes from The Godfather, and but I don't see no casino on oh, there, Oh, come man. on, man. Casino, didn't what's even, up? Didn't even Listen, make the top 100. Because most people that are, are working, putting that list together are... Listen, they're talking about... <laughs> come on, man. It's all like super, super old people. But like, 
try to make the choices, and like, you know, and they, they can't hang with the yeah, movie no, it's, that's. It's not actually super old. So how they do it is. Uh, they can't hang with with the movie that that has so much uh, grit, like Casino dude, Man, and have, intelligence. They and, have on the water, and, and, you, know, have, you know. So one of my favorite movies, my my mom made me watch it. it freaked the shit out of me. They when can't. I was, they can't handle a Casino. That's why. Yeah. No, I don't know. Don't Bunch think, of old timers. I don't think that's it. Uh, they just got sick of Pesci and De Niro. <laughs> I love that movie too, but I don't love it that much. Uh, wow. Anyways, so um, what was I saying? You were saying about uh... oh, my mom made me watch uh, the Rear Window, dude. That's oh. one of my favorite all time movies. It's a Alfred Hitchcock. Well, that's because your mom told you to watch it. It was an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It stands up today. You can watch that movie; and it'll freak you out. Dude. We'll see. Oh, it's a scary movie. It's not as suspenseful. Ah, uh, yeah, that's usually said when it's scary. It's not scary. It's not scary. So for you guys out there, I, I honestly like. I used to love scary movies. I used to love horror movies. Um, I don't like horror movies. I used to love horror movies, but as I get older, like even when I'm about to click on one, where I'm like that close to watch one, like today, I truly ask myself, like, do I want that energy in my house? I'm with you. I don't like. I, I don't do like I want to feel that eeriness? I, I just don't, and I skip it, and I don't watch them. Doesn't mean they're not good. I'm just, I've, just for I've, me, I've my some, person, I don't I don't so, dig it. I had some freaky stuff happen to me when I was a kid. But it was all done like weird stuff. Like I was seventeen in the house that uh, I grew up in. Yeah, yeah you you've been there. We live right on the main street. A lot of crackheads up and down that main street all really? the time. It's clean there though. Everybody you you say that, but we're in the middle of the hood, in between two hoods right there. And there was one time I'm in the backyard. Maybe I mean, maybe before, because right now it looks it's the same, yeah. dude. It's just about the same. Well, it's just different. Yeah. Now there's a lot of Vietnamese in the area. So it's it's just a different vibe now. Just different. A lot of Hispanics. And, and uh, yeah, so I'm at home, right? We just saw, saw, like, I don't even know what we saw. I just know we watched a scary movie, dude. And all of a sudden we hear something in the back. And... We were used to this, so my dad's like, get up, get the bat. We need to see who's in the backyard. Oh, so you, you think someone like jumped the wall or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my parents are asleep, or my dad's <laughs> get like the bat? <laughs> in the bathroom, and my mom's asleep. And I'm like looking out the window like, dude, a lady's jumping around with one leg in my backyard. What? Looking out the window going, hey, I need your help. I need okay, your help. scary. And I'm like. What the <laughs> freak is going on here? No way. This is a true story. My brother will back me up 100% because my brother then comes out and he's like this big and he's like, ah! And then, this is the kicker. Wait, so what? This is the kicker. She jumps on her bike because we had the side gate open and she's one-legged lady riding her bike in her backyard and out to the front and then she's gone. And then we call the cops, and the cop is like, yeah, that's Alice. She's been around. Oh, she's, they know her? Yeah, she's a little mental, uh, man. We're sorry. Little, yeah. Little da, da, da. That's just one story, dude. So I then, like she didn't get hit with the bat. Oh, we went. <laughs> 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 if, my, if, my dad, if, if my dad were there, if my dad were there, oh, we probably would have went outside and like. Oh, dude. Like, stay, took, the same way from two things: <laughs> scary movies and the bat. So here's I'm the glad other you one. did it, by the way. So here's the other one, dude. <laughs> this is a, this is jacked up. So my dad's brother's love. <laughs> Could you imagine explaining that in court? Oh, Why did you beat up the one-legged lady? Because <laughs> we were freaked out, dude. We were so freaked out. Oh, uh, oh dude. That house, dude, has oh. so many like memories like that. And anyways, so I was growing up. And we just rented this new house in Garden Grove when I was probably, well, my brother wasn't born yet because my mom was pregnant. So I was eight. No. And um, me, my mom had a craving. And back then, McDonald's closed at like nine. Right. So it was like, oh, crap, we got to hurry to McDonald's and we'll come back. She had a craving, right? Little did we know, my dad's brother, like, you know, comes over and my mom's like, no, they're not here. Oh, yeah, you should scare them. She didn't know that my dad's brother had a big white bunny costume. <laughs> Dude, and hid behind the cars, right? Uh -huh. Hid behind the cars. And they knew, dude, I was a scaredy cat, dude. And all of a sudden, we pull up. 
we're getting out. I'm all fat kid. Got my nuggets, dude. I'm like, do, 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 do. I'm walking, and all of a sudden, this big freaking bunny jumps out. Ah, I went, ah, it was my food, oh, and, and I'll never forget because I never see my dad that scared. My dad was just to the side of me. He goes. Oh my god! And takes the bag of food and starts beating it. <laughs> so my mom never got her food. <laughs> and my dad beat the crap out of his brother, dude. And, and he didn't like, know it was him. Or no, he, he didn't know. He it was didn't him. know it was him. And he's like, "Mike, it's me, Steve." <laughs> <laughs> True story. Oh man, I have several of those. Like I remember uh, when we lived in Commerce, we had a big yard, and um, my dad, my dad had a car parked in the driveway. And it was, you know, back in the day, man, if, if your kid was old enough to be able to make himself some food and stuff, yeah, you could leave him alone a little bit at the house, you know, while you went, ran some errands or went to do something. So I was home alone. And we had two dogs, Corky and, and Sultan, or Sultan. And uh, Sultan was legit, man. He is half Doberman, half uh, German Shepherd. Beautiful dog, man. Smart dog. And uh, big dog. And uh, that guy would always, like, he, he had the same birthday. We shared the same birthday, July 1st. And maybe that's why I'm remembering him. And uh, best dog I've ever had. Um, and uh, so I was upstairs, and I and I hear Sultan barking, right? And it's constant. And, he, and it was one of those dogs that wouldn't make noise unless he had to. Like, like unless it was something's like, there's there, something's, something's there. Going on, yeah. yeah, it wasn't one of those, like, annoying dogs, you know? Like, so I look out the window. We had a two-story house. And I'm looking down like this. And uh, there's a dude trying to siphon the gas from the, from the vehicle in the driveway. And uh, I'm like, oh, shoot. And I know what he was doing. I was a kid, but I knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, he's trying to steal my dad's gas. And Sultan and Corky are like barking at him, just barking, barking. And I open up the window. I go, get him, boy, get him. And, you know, he was, like I said, we shared a birthday together. Yeah, that yeah, guy, yeah. if I would lay down, he would lay down, like he would sleep next to me and oh, stuff. Really? Like he was just really, nice. really protective. So when I opened up the window, I said, get him, boy, get him. Dude, he went crazy. So that dude was like trying to, so then he was trying to use the gallon. He had two, um, like two of those five gallon yeah, things. Yeah. And he was trying to like hit them with the, with the gallons. Yeah, yeah. And they were just getting more worked up. As I was saying, get them, boy, get them. Now they're thinking they're also protecting me. So they're getting real hyped yeah. up. They're biting his arms, biting his really? hands. Oh, that's they're crazy. biting his leg. Um, uh, uh, Quirky had the guy by the pet. So as he's trying to like hit Quirky, uh, Sultan is just having that dude on his arm, his rib, like but just biting them, dude. And uh, the guy finally drops the, the um the tanks of gas he tries to run out but now he's trying to because we have a gate right so he's trying to like not run and leave the gate open he's trying to like get them to stay so back trying, yeah to stay gate. back behind the gate so he could close it and then get away and every time he tries to push the dog's back he's just getting mauled dude. his hey, hands are getting all you imagine mauled. having to try to explain that like at the hospital that was his fault man yeah that's what i'm saying you know like... so um i called uh, my neighbor my neighbor was uh one of my my tias uh, my tia eva uh rest in peace uh she uh so she's like okay mijo we gotta call like she got all nervous you know okay mijo we gotta call the cops okay do you she goes um do you, do you know the number and i'm just like you're the adult i'm just gonna call 911 so i just hung up call 911 then the cops didn't get there till like six hours later That's the man. Worst, man that is the worst but you know which was i think was okay because if they would have gotten there right away i didn't think about this like, where are your parents at? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true <laughs> My babysitter was assaulted, you know? Uh, but everything was all good, but the, the guy never came back. That's funny. But, uh, uh, that, you know, that guy tried to, tried to be slick, man. He saw a car there, and he's like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some free gas. Oh, dude. So he, he paid a price for that one. Right there at my house, there was a lot of people that would always try to break into our cars, and we live right on the corner, you know? So it's, like, easy to get in and out, and, oh, dude, we... Jack up some dudes that would try to get in there. That's right. I could see that because there's a main street that you could just like, and then yep. the freeway's close by. Close by, yeah. yeah. That's, well, that's what it was for us. Remember I told you about the A&PM? That yeah. infamous A&PM, man. <laughs> so with a and P.M.'s at, right, the entrance to the five freeways right here. And uh, so you could go down that way or you could just shoot down, gauge, and dude, you're gone. Like it's just all um, yeah. industrial. Yeah. So there's you're, no way of getting you're gone. Yeah. Like no one's gonna find you, dude. You could do something and you're, you're done. That's how our house was. It always was yeah. trying. To, somebody was trying to break yeah. in, dude. So, or we get drunk, dudes, over like, almost the summer. Every summer, dude, 
here, boom, because they're these all these guys are getting drunk and they would try to they make the turn to go into yeah. our, oh, and they just hit our wall, boom, and we got so. We got, this, who pays for that? Not the city, that's for no. sure. My dad, was, after a while, learned how to do masonry work <laughs> so that he could fill the holes. He had to pay all those uh, deductibles. Yeah, yeah. No, he didn't even do that. He just, no, was, he, just he had so it. many friends in construction. Oh, right, right. oh that's they right. The trade, whole neighborhood worked yeah, in construction. Yeah, they would trade work. And... There was another time when um, we weren't home, but uh, somebody tried to break into the house. And, uh, and Sultan, I'm telling you, dude, that dog, uh, Sultan, the dog was legit. He didn't let them in. And uh, I was like, yeah, I got home. I would get home, and then he would always, like, follow me around and stuff. And I offered him, like, a little snack, and he didn't take it. That was weird. I was like, no, that's not normal. I offered him water, didn't take it. Offered him milk, and that's, like, that was, like, a prize, like, snack for him. Love milk, huh? Yeah, milk. Like, you love milk. And when I put the bowl down, he went to, like, he tried to lick it, but he couldn't, and then I saw a drip. A little red dot. Oh, no. And I was like. It's like, did he hit himself somehow or something? And then he tried to lick it again, and then like more, more red. And then I went, "What's up, boy?" And like I went under his, like his chin. He got went, hit or something. And when I went like that, it was soaked. It was all blood. And I was like, "Oh, dude, what happened?" Like so now I'm like freaking out. And I touched his chest. His chest is full of blood. And then I go, "Oh no!" And he just sat down, and he was just like looking at me. And then I, and I go to open his mouth. Like, he would let me, like, touch him and stuff. Like, he trusted me, you know? Dude, his tongue was slit, slit in half. Oh, what, a, what the heck and, happened? And then I started touching around, and my fingers were going in. Like, the fingers were going in his neck and his chest and his, and his tongue. Like I said, dude, it, that was really impressive because he was a big dog. You know how big dogs, they, they have a big tongue when yeah, they're panting? Yeah, yeah. And um, his tongue was, like, out, but, like, it was, like, slit. Like, no joke, like, almost all the way to the top. Did somebody do something? Dude, they were trying to break in, and he wasn't allowing them to come in the gate, and so they started stabbing. Oh, man. He was stabbed 18 times. Dang. 18 times, dude. And um, and so I ran and told my dad, hey, dad, something's wrong with Sultan. Um, and my dad comes out to check him, and he's like, oh, dude, and grabs him right away. He grabs him right away. Because he already had saved us from so much, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gra- grabs him right away, takes him to the, to the hospital. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. And I know it's going to sound extremely ignorant. I didn't know that there was hospitals for dogs or like emergency rooms <laughs> for dogs. I didn't. Or... I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that because it's just a different culture, dude. Like yeah. I'm first generation born here and it's like Leave they're the animals. Like, yeah, they're like they're animals. You, know? the like, you, like you take care of them, you feed them and you, you treat them well. But you don't know about medical like no. uh, like stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like l- let alone us, we didn't even have insurance, right? Like yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know. It's expensive too. Yeah, dogs, yeah. So, so when I saw my dad, like w- once my dad figured out what was going on, he picked him up, put him in his cart. Like, dude, a, a Mexican dad does not put a dog, <laughs> a, bleeding, a bleeding dog, a ble- in. in the car. Yeah. you know. And he did. He didn't hesitate. He just right away, boom, took him to the hospital. And we waited, like, it, it seemed like forever, dude. It was like my favorite dog, you know what I mean? Like, same birthday, everything. And uh, my dad finally calls my mom from the from the hospital, and uh, my mom tells us, oh, they're uh, performing surgery on it. I'm like, what? Surgery on a dog? Like, I was like, <laughs> blown, blown, away. blown away, dude. Like, wait a minute. Like, first off, surgery on a dog. And then secondly, my dad's going to, like, pay for a dog to have surgery? <laughs> like... You know, he like, wouldn't buy me the Atari. I, I thing and <laughs> no, me. I was just like blown away, dude. And so finally, like my dad gets back, like really late, and then uh, we still don't have the dog back. But then he explains to us like everything that happened. He's like, "Yeah, the doctor said that he was stabbed eighteen times, Dang. tongue was sliced. Uh, they don't know if he's gonna make it. They patched him up, but they, he still has to make yeah, it through that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because there's like some damage. Yeah. And gotta... Um and uh. And then we finally, like, after a few days, we got some good news that he was eating. Really? Yeah. And it's funny because, like, uh, I remember after the incident, his tongue was never the same. Like, his, so, like, you know, like, the end of the tongue, right? It's nice and round. His was, one was longer than the other. It was, like, like short. <laughs> like, one was longer. You know when they scoop up water? He could only scoop up with the, like, longer part. And the, the, there was, like, a side that was, like, shorter. I think he got too damaged or something. I was going to say something. And then, um, <laughs> and then uh, his, uh, his cardio was never the same, dude. Never the same. Like it, it, like it messed him up. Damn, dude. Yeah, it messed him up. But uh, like till today, when my dad and I talk about Sultan or Sultan, 
Um, we uh, we're, we're always like nostalgic because that dog, dude. Show me the tattoo, dude. That dog was legit. Man. Show me the tattoo. I'll on just show head. you later. <laughs> um, no, but uh, that was a, like I said, that was the first time. Like I I, I didn't know there was like medical like uh, emergency rooms for animals and stuff. But my dad said he's like, you know what, that dog deserved that. He deserved uh-huh. that and more. He's like, you know what, he's protected this house so many times. He's like, and this time he was willing to die to. He's like, what if you guys were in the house? He wouldn't have let that person in. Or if he wasn't there, that person wouldn't have went in. With that type of intention, would like to stab an, uh, an animal? You yeah. Know? Like, what kind of person is breaking in? And if my kids were there, he's like, you know what? We're going to do everything we can for that animal. And uh, he lived a good life. He lived, um, he lived until he was 18. Dang. 18. That's a long, that's that's a long, a long life for, for, dog for a dog. Right there. Uh, and the only reason why we had to put him down was because uh, his hips his hips were off. Oh, really? And then it's like a normal German Shepherd thing, you know? But uh-huh. um, his mind was good. Uh, I got to see him before we put him down and stuff. And it was also right around my birthday. It's crazy. It's so bad, dude, because our uh, basset hound that we have, we, we love that dog. Yeah. Shane loves that dog. Andy loves that dog. Uh, but she's going blind, and she has diabetes. So, uh, How does a dog get diabetes? <laughs> diabetes I'm sorry, dude. I don't know. I, I don't know to laugh, man, but how? I saw, I, I saw her. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's super skinny right now. Yeah, she doesn't look like. Uh, I don't know. Don't be. I'm with dude, you. It's a culture hey. thing. When they said, Gabby goes, we're going to have to give her insulin and we're going to have to do shots. I'm like, dude, let's just put her down. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I'm not trying to laugh about this, man, but I've never heard a dog having diabetes. Yeah, diabetes and blind, dude. What? Yeah, so. The funniest thing. Whose dog is it? Yours or Gabby's? It's Gabby's and the boys. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry, Gabby. That, that's why. Right. That's I thought why. it was Gary's. I'm my bad. If it were my I, dog, <laughs> dude, my dog would take a little trip yeah, to. Yeah, man. Of course you have to give it insulin. My dog would take a little trip to Mile Square and. <laughs> why do we both know that? That's it's, messed up, man. It's I just... just leave the gate open. Bye bye. Um. But remember, I was telling you, I don't do that. I put, There's shelters, animal I put, shelters. <laughs> I was putting furniture together this last week. Yeah. Poor dog, man. What? Because dogs have a memory, right? And they sniff, and they can get got if they know their house. Oh, you're a jerk. Did you put it like, right I, in the center I of like, the living room? Mean, I did not mean. Oh, I was putting oh, shit that's together. Up. That's like kicking the dog legs <laughs> down. And all you hear is <laughs> like yeah, bumping. Every two minutes, it dunk. Oh. That's messed up. And, hey man, Gabby was laughing too. We were we were <laughs> dying, dude. There's nothing funnier than when like the dog is nowhere's going. It's like boom, boom, and then Shane has these steps because the dog sleeps with Shane in the bed. Shane moved the steps. All of a sudden, we're all in the room putting up these these shelves, and all of a sudden, you see the dog go up these steps, and we're all like, we're nowhere near the dog. We're all like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because bassets, they'll break their back because they're so long. Oh, uh, so like if they fall, fall wrong or something? Fall wrong, yeah. they, and she's old. Oh, man. And, How old is she? Uh, bassets only lived at like 14, 15, so she's like 15, 16. Oh, okay, so she's pushing it. Yeah, she's pushing it. And all of a sudden, she's up on the bed and... Boom. Oh, she fell? <laughs> yeah, it was funny as shit, but, but it was so bad. I'm sorry, guys. Because we had to make sure the dog was hurt, but it was so funny, dude. <laughs> do you do you uh have you ever had your own dog? Yeah, growing up I had yeah. uh I had bassets and I had a uh Oh um, so you like basset hounds then? Yeah, 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 I like basset hounds. Bassets are good dogs actually. Yeah. Um they're loud, keep people away, very loyal. They're they can be little beastly dogs because they're hunting dogs. So and nobody knows that when they attack, they attack and they attack like an alligator. So they'll attack and roll. They do a death roll? Yeah, they do a death roll. They do a death roll? Basset yeah, hounds do basset that? Basset hounds do that. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. You can look it up. Um, they roll and, and try to bite and yeah, they, turn because they don't have a lot of leverage. So that's, that's how they... That's nuts. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, yeah. They'll break like duck's necks and... Oh, you're going to have to send me some videos yeah, down yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, she did that stuff. But I had Basses. I had a wiener dog when I was growing up. That was my favorite dog. I had a... His name was Mimin. Um, it was half cocker spaniel, half Winnie dog. That dog was mean. Yeah, they're kind of they're kind of mean, so dude. So mean, but so loyal. They were so loyal. But for some reason, loved me. Never bit me. I bit everybody. Never bit me. And that guy, 
That guy was like 22 or something when yeah. he passed away. He lasted they live forever, forever, dude. They're little strong dogs. And he, he went blind. He went um, blind, and uh, I was the only one that could feed him. He, it, like, he only knew I, who you were. Like, we, we put the plate of food, and he wouldn't eat it. So then I would grab it with my hand, and I'd put it in his mouth, like literally like in his mouth, and that's the only way he'd eat it. Oh, really? Even if my dad would come near him, and that was my dad's dog. Like, they were, they were good, like, together. But after he went blind, he didn't trust anybody. I don't know if it was my scent or what. He, was, I was the only one that could get close to him and feed him. And stuff. Maybe because he probably didn't know. He, he was like, he's not gonna kill me. He's yeah. gonna <laughs> take me to the vet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a smart dog, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. here's a good story, dude. Well, I don't know how good it is, but so I, I have tons of stories about my stepdad. He's, he's a sound sleeper. He was a drinker, like. You know, it was like fifth or sixth grade. We get, we lost both our dogs. Somebody left the gate open. We were in Hawaii. Oh, they ran away? And they ran away. Oh, I don't know if they ran away because oh, they they're them? purebreds, dude. Oh, yeah. So they're I don't probably, know if they ran away stolen. or, you know, uh. yeah, I was pissed. We were all pissed, you know. And then, anyway, so my dad's like, well, look what I brought, you know. New little cute puppy, black, real furry, like a Maltese type of dog, like a girly type yeah. of dog. So cute. Right, and second night we have it, we're like, "Where's the dog? We can't." F- oh man, we lost the dog. What? The dog got out, man. I don't know what happened. Somebody probably snaked it, saw it, and snaked it. And oh man, about a week later, dude, everybody's in the living room, and we're like, "This house stinks. This house smells like sh- crap, man. It smells like, like a death, dead rat, like death, dude." Week goes by, and we're like, we got to find that smell, man. We're all over the house, you know, whatever. So my dad used to come home, Mm -hmm. and he'd sit in his recliner and fall asleep. The dog must have got under the recliner when he fell asleep, and he crushed the dog, dude. The dog was all in the levers and the thing on the bottom of the chair. We had to turn the chair over, and we found little... Why did you tell me the story? Little gruffy, dude. My dad fucking killed the dog. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what the f- but we found the dog, man. We found the dog. I'm telling you, I have trauma in my life. Dude, that's traumatic, man. <laughs> As a kid, you imagine me? That was like my brother. So who found it? Uh, we all like we all just went on a mad search, like, oh, it stinks. It's gotta be around here somewhere. And my mom was kind of like putting two How and two together. How big was a dog? Only it was a puppy. So it was like that big, dude. So it was like real little, you know? Oh, and and my, my, heart, mom, my mom started putting two and two together. Like, don't let the boys come in here. We'll look for it. Don't let the boys. My mom went outside and my dad's all, Corey, come help me, you know? My little brother. <laughs> my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> still, my brother still to this day, man. He's probably he's, dude, he's traumatized. My brother is traumatized by that. Um, his kids, dude, they got could a you dog. Imagine the dog was probably all twisted so, up. So the, <laughs> it was, dude. It was nasty. Then, it, then of course I had to come see, you know. Oh. Uh, but no, to this day, then my brother was traumatized, like and always angry. At my was the dog named? Did you guys name the dog? Yeah, I wish I could remember. I know we did, but I don't remember. Oh, that's it. better that you don't, man. Uh, but my dad, uh, my brother, oh, no, my brother got a dog, that. dude, a puppy, cute little puppy for for his kids, about um, six months ago, just before the quarantine. Uh, and my dad, we're all there. How like, do you go to jail for that nowadays? <laughs> we're we're all there at my brother's house, and my dad's like nodding off in the chair, you know. This is now. And this is now, uh, like six months ago. Yeah. And my brother goes, "Wake up, <laughs> get out of the chair." <laughs> There's a dog here. I don't want you to kill a dog. And my niece and nephew were like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> like looking at him. <laughs> so if you know my brother, he's, he's gotten very spiritual and, he, and and he's found God, you know. And but when it comes he's to my dad, clearly dude, traumatized. When it comes to my dad, f bombs will yeah. come out like crazy at my dad because my dad's got thick head, dude. And he's just like, yeah, he's like, and then here's my dad. <laughs> I'm just leaving. I'm just oh, leaving. He's, he's, he's offended. Yeah, he's offended. He's offended, dude. And he gets up and leaves. And, and he goes, and then oh. as he's leaving, my dad's like, oh. And you hear my brother, I'm not the one who killed a dog. I'm not the one who. And this was like 40 years ago. 
<laughs> but it happened but to him it's like just yesterday, just yesterday yeah. dude. and he was able to just just spew out all, oh. the, all the crap that he had on him uh, built up over 40 <laughs> years oh man and I'm, i got so many true stories oh, like that it's geez. ridiculous man ridiculous dude yeah no i man my life's a sitcom yeah i had a <laughs> i had one of those little chow chows a black one. Yeah. Black one with a little white stripe down the chest and a little blaze right here. And it was the cutest thing, man. It was aggressive. A little one. Chow Chow's are. Yeah, he wouldn't let, like, um, I still had, um, I still had uh, Sultan and Corky. And he was the third dog. He had a huge yard. Um, and he wouldn't let them punk him. Like, he was, like, tough. Little tiny thing, man. A little fluff. And he wouldn't let them mess with him. <laughs> and uh, I remember there was a neighbor there was a neighbor that's like, oh, it's a beautiful dog. Um, vend them alone. Like, sell them to me, you know? Oh, no, no. Like, I just got this dog, you know? And then that same neighbor talked to my parents. Hey, you know, I know it's Junior and, and Ozzy's dog, you know, Osvaldo's dog. But, hey, sell it to us. You know, sell it to us. It's a beautiful dog. Sell it to us. And I was like, no, it's, for the, it's a kid's dog. I can't sell the dog, you know? Um, long story short, dog disappears. <laughs> Like yeah. literally yeah, after, yeah, yeah, yeah. literally after that conversation, we had that happen to one of our dogs, and then we found it at a neighbor's. And house. then my then my parents found out that they took it, yeah. blah blah blah, and they found out what home they had it at and all that. But it's just like, why know, dude? people don't understand? Like, yeah. go to the especially pound. especially when there's kids involved. Don't mess with people's dogs, dude. Don't steal their dogs. Like the kids, like it's part of the like immediately once they meet them, it's part of the family, man. Like don't mess with dogs. That's like that's like pretty soon we're gonna have some hard times in our house because Shane's is gonna be devastated when that dog. And you only have one dog, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For them, they have. I've had dogs, numerous dogs. Yeah. So I'm not. I mean, I mean, like right now, currently. You yeah, have yeah, we only have one dog, and that's the talk we get. Would, would you would you get another dog? That's a, that's the talk we would have. Like, would we get another dog? Would we? Because she's been so much work, dude. It's like. Yeah. You know, it's like maybe we should wait a couple years and you know before we think of getting something. Maybe a little, maybe we'll rescue something. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, for me, it's always been like I know the girls are trying to talk me into because Rampage passed away, right? Another um, one. And they're trying to like, like they're trying to talk me into like get another dog. I'm like, no, dude. You know how many poops I pick up every day? <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. Nine poops a day. Yeah. Nine. Dude. I know because I scoop them up. There's times, dude, where I, Every get, day. So, I get so tired. Gary, it doesn't fail. Every single That's day. That's the argument of my house. I know the argument, dude. Nine the, poops. The argument, Gabby's always like, did you pick up the poop? And you outside? know what happens if you skip a day? Oh, you have 24 poops down there. Then you got double the amount. So that's what happens, dude. I'll go nah, out there. Man. I'll go out there and I'll sweep out the poop. No. Oh, man. She I had, love dogs. She, too, she had a bad day. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and then, sometimes it's not easy poops to pick up. And then by, for whatever yeah, reason, not, they ate something different or yeah. whatever. And, you're like, and then oh. by Friday, dude, I go back out there and it's like freaking Iwo Jima. Landmines everywhere, dude. <laughs> and, and Gabby's always like, you didn't pick up the dog. I, I did. I just... Not only that, but like I love plants, and like having big dog, and I love big dogs. But at some point, you realize you can't have both. And if you do have both, you got to compromise. Your plants aren't going to be as nice. Your yard is not going to be as yeah, nice. Yeah, your yard is not going to be as clean. That's what we said too. Like, like you either accept that, or you say no more dogs, or or like you have three choices, right? Where you accept it, or no dogs, or you do have dogs. And it's just a mess back there. And you just let it be. And just let it be. Yeah, but I also can't. Live, I like I, my backyard has to be at least somewhat decent. My I love plants. Like even Jimena, we teach her not to like pull on plants and rip them and tear them. And we teach her about plants and stuff. Like no man. Like I just I'm at a place where all right, we still have these two dogs. We still have these two boxers. We're good. Like you know. Yeah, you have two dogs. Yeah, I get it. I, like the, there's no I need, get it. and even, they're girl dogs, so they don't pee everywhere. Yeah, and all girl that, dogs you know? are so much better yeah. than boy dogs. And so now my backyard looks decent. Yeah. It's all clean. We have the, because Rampage, dude, that guy was so damn smart. We any seats or or cushions or anything we had, he knew how to climb and he'd sleep on them instead of like sleeping in the doghouse like the girls do in their kennel. He'd go and sleep on like the good stuff. Dude. Oh yeah. And there was a rocking chair. There was one that kind of rocked a little bit, dude. He'd go on it, and then in the morning you see him getting sun, and he'd go like this. Back and forth, back and forth. Dude, I'm like, dude, this dog, like, he's like a human. Yeah. He's a human, man. Like, you know, it's just four legs. But anyways, I, I no more dogs, man. Yeah, I'm with Unless you. I get a ranch, I'm good with the dogs, dude. Yeah, and you have a space for the dogs and where they can do their dog yeah. thing. And, yeah, no. Yeah, no. 
Yeah, dogs are hard. Man, I love dogs too, but even this one though, I'm like, this has been a lot of work. You know and, Paul Wisdom? Yeah. He had a beautiful dog, man. Um, I got good stories. Chance? Though. Chance. Yeah. Oh, you know Chance? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chance was legit, man. So, the, so like how, like kind of how Paul talks about Chance, that's how I was with Sultan. So, yeah. Paul used to, uh, after I got sick, I was out for like four or five months. So he would pick me up and we'd go have coffee. Yeah. And, uh, cause I wasn't allowed to be by myself. So he told Gabby, oh, I'll pick him up and we'll go have got coffee. It. And then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'll watch him, you know, I'll babysit him. <laughs> yeah. And he had Chance in the, in the van, you know. Yeah. Has a we'd be at cool Starbucks. bus. Did he take in the bus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd be at Starbucks. VW dude. bus. And this is before his new wife, so Bonnie, yeah. He used Chance, dude. He was picking up women left and right at Starbucks, dude. We had so many older women. Oh, my God, is this your dog? And Paul, dude, I didn't know he laid that on thick, dude. <laughs> I love you, Paul. Do you I learned like, a lot right no, there. Hey, there's a difference between Paul... Just being nice and a gentleman like he is, and the difference between women trying to like get his attention. That oh, is a women big were difference. trying to get his attention. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I, you know, Paul, Paul's a reserved Paul, man. He's a, Paul he's a... admitted it. Chance is a lady killer. <laughs> and his dog was so good. Dude. He always had that uh, bandana around his neck. Yeah, yeah. His dog was so good. I, we'd go over to his house and we'd watch UFC fights and stuff. Yeah. And uh, he had a bachelor's pad. Hey, yeah. Chance was huge, Huge man. dog. Big dog. And he would just leave his van door open, yeah, and that was his dog, dog yeah. house, dude, and he yeah. would just go lay in there. Yeah. But he didn't mess it up, though. No, no, no. It was a good dog. Yeah, he was a good, good dog. dog. And an older dog, yeah. He was so good. Yeah. Because they used to take him to the studio, too. Yeah. And he was so chill. So all chill, time. man. Golden Retriever. Yep. Dude, yeah, you miss out those times, man. Yeah, that's, uh, when, that's when you were, I don't think, you took a hiatus. No, no, I was there for Chance. What are you talking no, about? No, 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 no. When we were all hanging out at uh, Paul's house. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was never invited to that. I was always the, the poor kid, you know. Yeah. From, uh, Sorry, man. From Alley County. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't remember you then there at yeah. the time. I, no, I never went to Paul's house during that time, no. Uh, it was like me, Jason, um... Who else? Stacy. Um. Jason's wife, Stacy. Uh-huh. She was um, uh, Lucia's with my my brother's daughter. Uh, my brother's daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, teacher. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. Small world, dude. Yeah, it is a small world. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, and I love Jason, who, my, our Irish brother. Who else was there? Uh, I can't remember. Who, there's at least five of us. Yeah, we go over there, have pizza, watch UFC. Fights. Very cool. It was it was kind of when he first lost his first wife, yeah. right around that time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that dog was dope, man. And, and I think that, like, uh, I got good memories of just having having dogs. I've had all kinds of dogs, but... There's good and there's bad dogs, dude. So... I don't know, the, man. I don't know house, if I agree with that. The house next door... I think all dogs are good. I think there's bad owners. You're probably right. The house next door to where I grew up at, they used to have a pack of little chihuahuas. And they were, they were, so ankle, they were ankle biters, right? So you come up and you hear kids, ah, you know, ah. So my dad, keep your dogs out of our yard, you know, quit the neighborhood. People are trying to walk on, you know, keep the dogs tied up or keep them in your backyard. So one day. Oh, they're like running around loose? Yeah. Like a little pack of. A little feral, pack of chihuahuas. A feral yeah. chihuahuas? And then, you know, they had the big one and then three yeah. little ones. Not too then, crazy about chihuahuas. No, nah, and they would just run in packs. So my dad's like, if you don't. <laughs> Take care of your dogs. I'm going to kick the dog. <laughs> and the guy hey, was like... Your dog is just a straight up dog killer, man. <laughs> and he goes... Murder! He, he tells the guy... He tells the guy, I'm going to kick your dog. I'm going to kick a field goal with him. <laughs> and the guy was like, Mike... You know, all grumpy. And yeah. I swear to God, I saw it. I was sitting on our front porch with a couple of friends of mine. And we are 18, something like that. Yeah. Hanging out so on the porch, watching everybody yeah. drive by, and all of a sudden, the, one of my friends goes, "Oh, this dog!" My dad got livid. He was in the living room, got up. And all of a sudden, he, oh, he came out from the living room. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just see this dog go burp, <laughs> over the fence. <gasps> Boom! He's all field goal. Keep the fucking dogs in the yard. <laughs> Dude, the different times, man. <laughs> You've been thrown in jail for that now. You've been <laughs> so, doing time right now. So, okay. It is different times, dude. Like, it is. So, we had a Vietnamese family come in, 
have moved there. They're still there. Yeah. They're good, actually, really good friends of my dad. Uh, they're always bringing them up stuff for oh, Chinese cool. New Year when my mom passed. Yeah. They were feeding them all the time. Oh, that's cool, man. But my dad hasn't always been the best neighbor. Oh, your dad hasn't? He's, he would just give him crap. And it's different time. He's a different type of person. He doesn't think he's being, I wouldn't say racist. What's that called? Like bigoty, yo. Racist. Like, yeah, racist. <laughs> and every time he saw the guy, me and my brother would die laughing. He would be like, hey. He would never call him by his name. It was always like, hey, Bo, or hey, Tran. Or, he hey, would always switch his just, name. Just make up a name, oh, dude. Oh, man. And then, and then one day we're, we're there, and he sees him, and he says something. And he goes, you like music? And the guy's like, yeah, I love music, Mike. You know, Oh, cool. And they're talking about painting his house. He goes, you ever hear that song? You know, you guys, have, you guys probably listen to this song. And he goes... You know, everybody was kung fu fighting. Wow. <laughs> and me and my brother and all the guys in the front porch were like, <laughs> he just, just quiet. <laughs> everybody like, just went dead quiet. And the little Vietnamese guy though was so nice. He was like, Mike, I don't listen to your type of music. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, he knew that yeah, my dad yeah, was being, yeah, you know, yeah. a total yeah. prick. I like you to kick to the nuts, yeah. dude. And you know, that's a nice neighbor. But that tolerant neighbor. That's my dad, dude. He. That's why I say I've grown up around that type of crap. And it's funny because, it, yeah, like so you got that exposure, and then like, yeah. So you, you yourself were a different. Uh, I was a different breed yeah. too. Dude, because it's <laughs> That's like, so crazy. I had to learn to like live in different environments. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, whatever. It, it is what it is. But yeah, there's times though. My dad. I had, a, I had an incident. I don't know why I'm remembering this. Maybe because it's gonna be my birthday tomorrow. Um, we were going to remember Blockbuster. Oh yeah, Blockbuster was my favorite. So my dad, um, my dad was being cool with me, and he goes, "Hey man, uh, if you want to go rent a movie, I'll take you later." And I was like, "Oh, this is so cool!" And it was a Friday, and my dad was getting out of work early to go do that with me. You know, he's gonna take me. And my dad was working. My dad was always working. Man, he's a hard worker. And uh, he got home like at six, picks me up, and he's still dressed up like from work. You know. Uh, and uh, so he tells me to get in the car. We go. And so we're driving over. And this is in Downey, uh, the city of Downey. And um, yeah, it's a little bit nicer there. It's like yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. cooler. You know? um, so we're, we're, we're going to the city of Downey. And, and so we get to the Blockbuster there. We park. And when we park, um, there's not a lot of space. The, the parking spaces are like kind of like narrow. Narrow? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The and old so, school parking. Yeah. Area. And my dad drove a, at that time, drove like one of those big sedan, the yeah. Mercedes sedans. Like the like the like fight. the like the mobster sedan, yeah. like those big. You can fit like eight bodies yeah, in the back, yeah. you know, kind those of sedan. Those sedans, are dope, man. though, yeah. man. The those Mercedes. So anyway, so uh, he was still, and he had his trench coat. He always wore this leather trench coat, like all the way down to like to his Mobsters, ankles. Man. And it's just how he dressed, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and so like we part. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah, that's and that, by the way, that's a great movie. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, so we park, and then he kind of looks. Benny Blanco. Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Hey, remember me? <laughs> Benny Blanco from the Bronx. No, so so he kind of looks, and he goes, ah. He goes, he backs up, and he goes, all right, go, go ahead and get out first. That way I can scoot over a little bit. Like, you close the door, yeah. scoot over, and then, and then that way. Just, yeah. yeah. And then so he did that. And then so he was able to open it, and then get out, and then there was a big truck, a big, one of those, like, old, like, real metal trucks. Yeah, yeah. Like a Chevy, you know, just old. It wasn't fixed or anything, but it was, like, old, you know? Like a, a classic or whatever, and there was a a big gentleman in the front, and uh, you could tell like he was just like staring at my dad, like kept on like looking over, like, kept on looking over to see if he would like bump it, you know. His car. But my dad had a really nice Mercedes Mercedes sedan. Like my dad doesn't want to bump a car. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he's taking care. Yeah, of his like car. you know, yeah, 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 yeah. He's trying to. Yeah, and so like so my dad gets out, and then the dude gets out of this car, and he goes. Hey, hey, I saw you. I saw how close you got to my car. I'm just letting you know, you better not touch my car. I'm going to F you up. And my dad's like, what? Like, just out of nowhere. Right? And the dude was big. He's like, he's like 6'2", man. He's a big dude. Damn. And, Your dad's uh, a little guy, dude. And my dad's little. Yeah. yeah. My dad's little. He's a little um, guy. And uh, yeah, this was before he was a Christian guy. So I was just, I'm just making that. Yeah, just, did he fight? I got you. Nah, no, hold on. So, so... So I get, and I'm like, ah, oh, dude, man, like, like I knew, man, like, my dad doesn't like trouble, but he's also not, like, how do I explain it? He's not going to let someone push him around. 
yeah, just yeah. just simple as that. And uh, and so I look at my dad, and my dad goes, "Don't worry about it." And he's like, "Come on, let's go." And as we're walking, the guy goes, "Did you hear me?" He wants my dad's attention. You know what I mean? And then so my dad tells me, "Hasta para allá." Like he tells me, oh, "Go over there." You know? And I'm like, "Damn!" I was a kid, man. I was like, "What?" Well, like maybe maybe 14. Like, there's no way I could help my dad much, you know what I mean? Yeah, I would have tried. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you do try, but I'm, like, looking at this dude. This dude's a big old boy. <laughs> what are we going to do to him, Dad? We need to big boy, dude. And I was just like, and uh, I was like, um, and then, uh, so, the, uh, my dad just finally, so my dad tells me to scoot over, right, to go over there. And then, so I scoot over, I go over there, and then, uh, and then my dad says, excuse me, what did you say? Like that. And then the guy says... I said, I'm going to F you up. And then he goes, like he tells my dad, he goes, I said, I'm going to F you up over like the bed of the truck, right? So he's like, so let's say this is the bed of the truck. He points at my dad like this. He goes, I said, I'm going to F you up. He puts his hand down, turns around, goes back into his cab and starts searching for something. So my dad takes off his his uh, his uh, trench coat. It was a leather trench coat. So it's like heavy, you know? And he goes, he puts it on his arm like that. And then he grabs the crowbar from the back of his the guy's uh, truck of of the of the thing, yeah. And um, the guy comes out with a mag light, like a really big mag light. So now he he's not expecting this. He's thinking, oh, this guy's gonna be scared. He's smaller, whatever. He's you know, but he's not expecting that. My dad has this freaking thing, yeah. leather thing wrapped around his arm, and he has a crowbar now. By the time he turns around with his mag light, my dad's ready for him. <laughs> and, nice. And then the dude stops. He stops and he goes. He goes, hey man, what what, what what's up? What what? Like, like, uh, kind of like trying to backpedal a little bit, like trying yeah, to like yeah, bring yeah. it probably, back down. Probably reassessing yeah. this. And then, and then my dad goes, my dad goes, goes, um, he goes, I told you. He says, the next move is you. He goes, if you come closer to me or my son, I'm going to break, I have no, I will never forget that. He went, I'll break your bones. My dad does this with the freaking thing on his arm and the crowbar. He goes, I'll break your bones. Nice. And the dude's like, I don't want no trouble. I just don't want you touching my truck. That's all I'm trying to say. You know, and my dad just like backs up, you know, puts the thing back in his trunk, and then like he kept the leather, the leather um, yeah, jacket there. Engage. Yeah, because he doesn't. The, the guy comes with the mag, at least he could, uh, you know, block, it, block it, or it or whatever, you know. And then so my dad tells me to cross the street to go to the thing, and like he just kind of backs up, just kind of looking at him, and the guy goes back in his cab, pulls out, takes off. Damn, I love that, dude. Our dad's, you know. <sighs> I got. To, I've seen. This. I still get like worked up about yeah. it, like because like I saw my dad in action. Like he, he told me, "Scoot over." Yeah. And then he's like dead serious, dude. I knew my dad's like, like his, the way my dad was is so intense. Yeah. And like the way he was looking at that guy, my dad he was, was ready. Do something. He was ready. My dad was ready. And That's there's, cool. Like there's no fear there. Like once, I mean, like I'm a dad now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, know? well, like, man, you know, you like, know that look. Yeah. You're just like, dude, he's ready. Um. And that guy probably saw that. So here's my last you know word I mean? for the night because yeah. I'm starving, dude. Yeah, we're going we're going long today. Yeah. So. Oh, th- we got some good movies. Too. I was I was a, uh, I in high school I thought I was the man. I always had, you know, Friday night movie night at my house and. Oh like, yeah, you were popular. I had a lot of girls come <laughs> up over, you know. So I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go rent a movie, dude. We had the Dollar Rent a Store right around. We didn't have Blockbuster. Dude. We had the Dollar Rent a Store, little mom and pop shop, you know, and. um I go there, I go, let's get a couple movies, get whatever you want, you know, let's go, it's all me, I got a thing there. We go there, and the girl, you know, takes the movies, and she goes, beep, beep, and she goes, oh, you can't rent these, you have movies out. I was like, I don't have any movies out, so this is my... Your card. My card. Yeah. I don't have any movies out. Are you sure? You know, what What do you mean, I have movies out? So I have like four girls with me, dude. Like, and now you look like, like a... Like, I'm like trying a, to hook up. Now you look like a chump, because you can't I even rent like the movies. I look like a chump, dude. <laughs> And the girl and the lady could tell that like, oh, this guy thinks he's a, the shit. And she goes, "Well, you have like hot broads, blonde number one and number two oh, out." Oh, she was totally messing with you. <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> what? She goes, "Yeah, you have a joint account with your dad, Mike, right?" And I said, <gasps> "Yeah." My dad had read it. Burn, dude. Such a poor dude. It made me look like a fucking fool in front of all these, <laughs> dude. We laughed all the way back home, and the girls are like, they go in the house, and my mom and dad are playing cards, because we have a big house, oh. and all the girls are like, 
Hi, Mike. Oh, Hi, Mike. Man. And then I come in. You all mad starving oh, in there? Man. And and my mom goes, Did you did you get a movie? Did, you know, what happened? You look all mad, what happened? And the girls are like, Tell her, dude, tell her, you're like tell her. <laughs> And I said, yeah, they said we had movies checked out. Oh, we don't have movies checked out. You took them all back. And So your mom was like upset yeah, too. Yeah, upset too. And I said, no. Guess who has two movies checked out? She goes, me? I was like, no, dad. Oh, man. She was mad. And like, yeah. oh, I'll, I'll tell him and we'll go take it back and you guys go get movies. I said, you don't want to know the movies he has out. And I told her the names she of the movies. Pissed. All I heard was, <laughs> God damn it, Michael. <laughs> in front of everybody. Asked everybody to leave. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. It was a oh, big serious. old brawl, yeah. like fight between those two. Yeah, my dad was embarrassed, dude. <laughs> that was, it's that stuff like that, dude, that happens to me so oh, much. Oh, man. Oh, I'm going to give him a hug after this, man. Uh, yeah, but my dad is such a goon, dude. You tell him stuff like that, and he's like, oh, yep, that was me. <laughs> like, that's the type of... That's, he doesn't really care, dude. He doesn't really care. Hey, man. <laughs> trauma, man. It's going to be like our, like our constant thing, right? Like, it's just a trauma. You have, like, the cool dad story, you know? Your dad was like... Nah, I mean... He was, like, bringing Shaft, little bit <laughs> Shaft, dude, ready to bring some head up. <laughs> and my dad's, my dad's in the corner with porn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell dude? Oh, we what love you guys uh, simple man 0707 on IG <laughs> carry 872 <laughs> on IG and find us on uh, uh, Facebook yeah Facebook Gary and Abel podcast under uh, quarantine with Gary and, and uh, Black Belt Collective uh, alright guys man we love you man thanks for giving us a minute of your time peace peace